I said, plug me in. I got stuff to talk about, damn it. Damn it. Damn it. I'll call out of my earbuds once a week to give you a show. That's what I do, folks. I do this show for the common man, for the people in despair. I bring this show into the world and I sell it everywhere. The simple truth lies waiting here, folks, for all of you to share. Hold on, I will take you there. Hey, what's happening? Mike Schmidt, 40 year old boy podcast. You may notice I'm holding back a little bit with my lung capacity, my lung power. I'm not blowing out the microphone, I'm not yelling as I usually would in the beginning of the show. I am not grandly announcing the show. Here, I'll do it from back here. Hey, what's happening? Mike Schmidt, 40 year old boy podcast. And now I'll move forward here and I'll tell you that uh, I will say, hey, what's happening? Mike Schmidt, 40 year old boy podcast. Um, there's a reason, folks, behind all of this uh, change. First of all, let me go ahead and start this show with. Uh, well, fuck, I don't know if I want to do this. I don't know if I want to say it like this, because it's really, I don't know if I, mm, well, all right, hold on. The past few weeks, uh, unfortunately, as you know, there was a Babadook in the computer. There was a Babadook that was lurking <laughs> and changing things, uh, and it, it was showing up at the most inopportune times. Like, we didn't even fucking know. Our, that's our friend Lily Von Stupp. She's the producer. She's here today. Or I should Hello! say, I'm here today. I'm at her place, of course, the oldest building in Hollywood. That's where the show originates from. And uh, and perhaps, like I said, that's why. Perhaps there's a ghost in the machine because of the oldest building in Hollywood. But, as you know, over the past few weeks, uh, there's been a clicking that has been leaping into the narrative. Now, I can tell you this. <laughs> <laughs> I was not I was not planning on that showing up. I know you're thinking to yourselves, this is a like a long... Like, like there would be some sort of re- resolution to that by the end of the season. Because all our years always seem to have a theme. Like there's year one, which was the, hey, we're starting a podcast. Year two, which was, why are we still doing a podcast? Year three, which was, oh my God, he's still doing that podcast? Year four, which is mean, hey, his life's falling apart. Perhaps he should keep doing this podcast. Year five, uh, you know, you get it. You you bought him and you know exactly what we're talking about. Well, here we are in year seven. And the theme was, what the fuck is wrong with Lily's computer? That was pretty much the theme. Um, but we didn't know if it was Lily's computer or if it was Lily's uh, microphone or Lily's building itself. Uh, or if it was me, like, here's the thing, we, you know, because Lily and I, we're just kind of, we're honing in on me talking, but there's a very good chance that that clicking could have been coming out of my throat and I didn't realize it because I'm wearing earbuds most of the time. So I hear my voice and maybe the earbuds, because they're very good earbuds, folks. I use very good earbuds from tweakedaudio.com. They're our sponsor. Uh, and uh, part of that is true. Um but yeah, they, they are terrific, and I'm wondering if maybe their amazing earbuds filtered out the clicking that was coming out of my throat, as if there was some sort of cricket or something living right behind my uvula. Uh, and, and by the way, cricket uvula, if you do not name a band cricket uvula, I will be very disappointed in all of you. And I mean all of you. Let's all, whoever's hearing this right now, let's get together and form a band called Cricket Uvula. Should we do that? What can I play? I'll play, you know what? I'll play the zither. Get somebody to play a glockenspiel. Someone will play a triangle. And the reason I start with these rare instruments is because, fuck, there's so many of us. All of you can't play fucking guitar. Stand down, goddammit. Dave plays guitar. David will play guitar, and then everybody else can play whatever the fuck they can grab. Well, all that's it. We'll all go to David's house. All of us. Everybody listening to this right now. We're forming the band Cricket Uvula. You know what? Fuck it. I'm changing the band name right now. Cricket's Uvula. Not just Cricket Uvula, because that just sounds like we're talking about one. Cricket's uvula, that could be like a stripper's uvula. Like if there's a stripper named Cricket, how, you know what, let's be honest, how sexy is a name Cricket for like a chick? That's really cool, right? I'm changing my name now. Cricket? Dude, if you did. Oh my God. I, I think Cricket's a totally sexy name for a chick, right? I don't know. No, right? No, you're supposed sure. to, just say right because I agree. Because I like, right. yeah, because I think it is. You don't have to. You can agree that I think it is. But you know what it sounds like? Because it sounds like vaguely tomboyish. Like she'd have kind of a short pixie cut, but she'd also have pierced nipples. Yeah, I like cricket. I'm a fan of crickets. <laughs> and so crickets, you know, that's the band. And this is in tribute to this, this pixie-ish tomboy hot stripper girl that I just made up in my head. Good. I'm, in, I'm on board. She's going to look great on the bass drum. Holy fuck. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. Drum. That she'll fit right on it. I picture, you know who I picture like? Tinkerbell from Peter Pan, but like naked and hot, like with pierced nipples. Oh my God, I got to get pierced nipples out of my head. I don't know why I have pierced nipples in my head. Um, so yeah, so Cricket's Uvula, we're all forming that band and we're showing up at David's. Anyway, there's been a clicking uh, for in weeks past and 
We've done everything we can on our end. Lily brought her laptop in to the geniuses at Apple to repair it, and they did. Uh, they repaired the things that were evident. They, <laughs> they repaired the things that we hold to be self-evident, and they <laughs> took care of that. And we just assumed that everything would be fixed. And, you know, because Lily, for weeks, she was having to hold in the, the actual microphone cord to make sure that there was nothing going on with the computer, to make sure that the connection was right. Uh, we've had people give us all these suggestions. Uh, and, and you're all very nice. Thank you for your suggestions. And uh, my favorite part of it is when I give these suggestions to Lily and I watch her bat them out of the air like King Kong on top of a building swatting planes. That's my favorite part of the day. When I'm like, well, what about this from a listener in Tennessee? He writes, and then she's just like, no, and here's why. <laughs> Plane hits the fucking ground, Fay Ray screams. Uh, so, and because again, Lily, she knows, man, she knows. And, the, but the thing that we don't know is where the fuck this clicking is coming from. Did that blow it out? Pretty much. I looked way up at the ceiling to make sure. Like I tried to even look away. Oh, good. All right. Oh, I just bumped it now. I don't know. What the, so, uh, all right. Let me, so let me, all right, I will apologize for this part of it. I don't know what you're hearing right now. I don't know how, cause I, all right. We, a change has been made uptown. And a different microphone has joined the band. That's what we're going to say. Because we've been using Lily's, you know, her laptop and her setup and her mixing board and her computer and, and the fucking, uh, and her microphone. And I've always prided myself on the way this show sounded. I, Lily used to work in radio and she knows, man, she fucking knows. She's a goddamn home run when it comes to technical, uh, the, the technical aspects of the show. And that's why she is truly... Uh, the yin and the yang to my circle. She's the inside. I'm just the outside rolling around. I mean, I, I don't even, I'm not the black or the white. Sure I like this analogy. You are the yin and the yang. Uh, so, so she, you know, she runs it. I talk, man. And, uh, and I, look, I need to learn more of what to do because sometimes I'm in Milwaukee and sometimes I'm other places and I wind up talking to a phone and I send Lily you know, fucking 52 audio files and she's got to put them together like she's picking up a deck of fucking cards and that's no fun for her. Absolutely not. So there are plenty, the things that we have to learn and things that I, well, we, there's no we, I got to fucking learn this stuff because again, if I, even radio dudes learn how to run the board, right? Don't radio dudes learn how to run the board? Is that the first thing they fucking teach them? Not always. Nah. Sometimes. This, I disagree. I've talked to every radio guy in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I know what I'm talking about, man. I have talked to a ton of radio guys. In fact, all of them. Uh, no, I, well, either way, I, for my own edification, I need to know how to run the board just in case you, you know, because eventually <laughs> Monday Night Tease is going to get scooped up by some television network and you're not going to have time to produce this show. You're going to go ahead and, and, uh, and drift off and take care of your, yourself and be famous. And, and, you know, you're not going to farm this out to anybody else that, you know, who am I going to Bella? Is Bella going to come in and run my sound too? Bella's, you know, that, I can't ever do that. Our friend Bella Luna is a, uh, a dancer, a romancer. I'm a Capricorn and she's a Cancer. Now, what the fuck? listen, I'm going to work Kiss lyrics in every goddamn week. I have to. I have to. Uh, that's why people tune into the show. They're hoping <laughs> at some point I'll reference a Kiss song. Um, so Bella, yeah, Bella does the sound at the Monday Night Tease. She helps run the soundboard and stuff for Lily. So I was saying if she's going to come in here and run this. Um, but I will tell you this. She finds me infinitely less interesting than Lily does. So that show would be <laughs> very, no, it's totally true. There, that cannot be denied. Um, and that's, and it's certainly, that's not my fault and it's not her fault. And it's just because, you know, maybe she likes genuine human interactions instead of being talked at by a guy sitting across from her in a goddamn bar stool. Uh, I am not on a bar stool, but there is a bar stool present right now. That's why it's present in my head. Um, so I, I guess, you know, we've had clicking over the past few weeks and we don't find out until after the fucking fact because it doesn't show up in our audacity. It doesn't show up in our little thing. If there was a way to look at it, like a little Geiger counter or a seismograph, then Lily would stop it and we would know that the clicking was there. But unfortunately, what happens is Lily, we record the show and then afterwards she hears it. And, and I mean, at that point, it's, you know, we're, we're, we're too late. You know, we, we might have 15 minutes because we've taken out one time. What was it? An 18 minute chunk of audio we took out. Yeah. And, yeah. uh, and look, this is a lot of fucking inside baseball, but I'm just telling you because I, you guys have stuck with me, even though you hear the clicking and the weirdest thing, I'll tell you what people were like, like, I know there was clicking a couple of weeks and people wrote me and like, I didn't hear any clicking. I don't know what you're talking about. And I don't know if that was just people trying to 
keep the angry husband from hitting them. Like, I mean, I, I, you know what I mean? Like, it just seemed like such a weird, Mike, it's, it's okay. No, I, I, there, there was no clicking. Everything's fine. Don't, don't get upset. You know, it just seemed like such a weird way to try to pacify me by telling me there was no clicking because I heard the clicking. I know there was clicking. And if you're not getting clicking at your house, well, I'm glad for that. But also you may need to see a doctor because I mean, <laughs> there are segments of the show the past few weeks that sound like someone is running a weed whacker behind me. And so if you didn't get that, man, I don't know what the fuck got lost in translation. It might just be. And so that it makes me wonder then, am, is it is it something wrong with me? Am I the only is it my computer or my earbuds on the playback or is it your computer? I don't fucking know. I got no idea. That's the point. Lily, who, again, is a fucking home run, who is the who is the uh, a number one, the top dog, the Duke of New York when it comes to fucking audio and technical stuff. She is the fucking Duke of New York and she doesn't even know what the fuck it is. So. I can't be hoping to try to explain it in any certain way. Seriously, I just uh, it's, uh, it sounds to me like, uh, like I said, there's a ghost, a Babadook. That's it. That's my explanation for what's going on. But uh, you've been very patient and very nice. And, and, you know, you may just be turning the fucking show off. I have no idea. Nobody's really complained to me about it. Some people mention it to me, and every week people come up with solutions. But some of you may have just fucking turned me off, which I, you know, believe me, I'm not happy about. So we've, we've been trying to figure out what to do to change it. So this week, folks, here's what we've done. Uh, and, and with all the talking I've done so far, you probably can tell that there's something different, I would hopefully. imagine. Yeah, I hope. Well, let's put it this way. Hopefully there's no fucking clicking. We have no idea. Again, we won't know until playback. But I have a, uh, I have a microphone from my house. I pay, all right, well, um, a couple of months ago, uh, I have a friend who installs home studios. Like he comes and he sets up your computer and so you can record voiceover auditions at your house. And this is when I thought I, you know, I had grandiose ideas that I was going to get a voiceover agent and start doing voiceover work because, hey, folks, I love sharing this with you, but it's about time somebody paid for the privilege, right? Don't you think? It's about time somebody convinced me to, to be the voice of a duck. I mean, I can do that, right? Uh, why do I keep asking for approval from everybody? Can you, can you be the voice of a duck? Well, yeah, as long as the duck sounds like me. <laughs> If you want a duck to sound like a jagoff, then fucking hire me for that job immediately. Because I am the guy. If you came up with jagoff duck, I am your voice. Clearly, I am the man for the job. Go ahead and put me in a soundproof booth, and I will read pages and pages of jagoff duck dialogue. Done. However, if you have jagoff duck dynasty dialogue, you can hire those guys directly because you don't need me. Uh, did you read that thing this week about the guy with from Duck Dynasty? Look, here's the thing. I don't know. I don't know a fucking thing about the Duck Dynasty guys. All I know is they have stupid beards, and I think they like Jesus. I think. And I don't know if they've modeled the beards after Jesus. And I don't know if the whole thing... The whole thing could be a scam. You know what I mean? They could just be like... Honey Boo Boo's family, but they grew beards and ins- and they and they do whatever the fuck they do on that show. Because I again, it was one of those things that snuck up on me. Because I don't watch anything but Cupcake Wars. That's all I do these days. <laughs> I watch Keith Olbermann and I watch Cupcake Wars. That's my entire life. And so I don't know. What the- so Duck Dynasty came out of nowhere. It just started showing up on my Facebook and showed up on and and I guess they're. I don't know if they build decoys or they they build duck blinds or they hunt ducks or they literally or if they just have beards. I don't know what the fuck their talent is. Yeah. Their superpower. Are they ducks? They're ducks. They're, you know what? The beards are so thick. I would not fucking doubt that. <laughs> they're bearded ducks. Yeah. They're jagoffs and they're ducks. But you know who they're not? Fucking jagoff duck. That's me. <laughs> Draw it and book me. I will do the fucking job. So before I spiral off into fucking duck dynasty assholes, I, uh, I, I do... I have So I have this home studio thing at my house that I paid for because I thought I'd be doing voiceover work or, or trying to audition for it and all that kind of stuff. And I will eventually, hopefully, because I should be booked for a million fucking things. You should fucking hire me. I have in the car all the time. Yeah, this is so sad. In the car when I'm delivering food as Travis Barbecue, I will read back commercial copy as they read it to me. And I go, I could have done that. How Drive yourself fucking crazy by doing that, folks. By realizing you're on your way to the beach to bring rich people coleslaw, and instead you're in the car reading back fucking copy about insurance and fucking cancer, blood cancer samples, and you're telling yourself, I could have done this commercial. This could have been me. But you know what? Nobody comes to your house and goes, hey, can you do a blood cancer commercial for us, Jagoff Duck? (laughs) No, very rarely does that happen. And if they do, they knock on the door when I'm not there because I'm delivering coleslaw to rich fucking people at the beach. God damn it. Um, so I, so fuck it. I brought a microphone from home. That's the point. So my friend installed this studio into my laptop and, uh, and he had, uh, there's a microphone that I have. And so now 
normally when I'm here, I'm sitting in a chair in, in a, you know, directly across from Lily and th- her microphone is in a microphone stand here. You can actually hear it. And it has a bendy thing on it and all that stuff. So that's, I just reached over to grab that. That's there. Uh, but instead today I have a microphone, like a stand, it's on a stand, but it's tiny. It's a little, it's a table stand and it's, and, but it's not on a table. It's on a bar stool. That was the aforementioned bar stool we discussed seconds ago. And, and so now I'm using this is, and this is a trial run. This is a total test run. Cause I tried this thing out at my house when we installed the studio, but I only spoke into it for like 30 seconds to 90 seconds at a time. And that was just to see if it fucking worked. Now, I know a lot of you are thinking to yourselves, hey, you know what? This 30 second to 90 second thing should work for the podcast and you should only put out these bite sized 90 second podcasts, which would be fine probably. Uh, however, uh, I, I think that I'm going to do a full length podcast or at least the length that I can try to pull off and then we will see what happened. Because again, you're probably hearing me in an unvarnished way because what was the, uh, what was the technical term here, Lily? You know what? I, you're taking, Lily's taking photos of me talking on this new microphone. I really think you should get it from the side. And there's a reason why, because dudes, no. this is, honestly, this, this is, a, this is, this microphone is disturbingly phallic. I'm not going to lie to you. It is because normally microphones have that anyway, but the microphone I talked to into before with Lily is just, it's like a regular microphone, but then it's got a big bulbous like windsock on it. And I mean, there's, that might be like a fucking giraffe cock, but it's not like a real <laughs> cock. Okay. But the one that I have in front of me right now, uh, it, it's. It's got like a windsock pulled over it and then the sock is turned up at the end. It's got, and it's got rigid, dude, it, this looks, it looks like a cock. I'm not even joking. It really, to me, it looks like I'm talking directly into a cock, which makes it very difficult to do the show because all I can think about is college. Now, <laughs> uh, <laughs> come on, we've all done it. Talk directly into a cock, right? Uh, I gotta stop asking, right? Seriously. I, if I'm going to do that, I need to get an act like an actual co-host who just goes, right. <laughs> Cause I already told people to just type right on my page and they did. Uh, but I, and I thought that would cure me of it. And yet here I am continuing to do it. Um, you know, but I, I, you know, why I'm asking because I'm, I, I have a cock staring me right in the goddamn face. All right. And it's just, and it's so funny cause I, 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 Lily's taking the photos and in my head, I'm like, well, take a photo from the side because you can see, cause then you would really see it. Cause from the side is where you could really see it. And then I, and then in my, ah, uh, certainly. And then I thought. Uh, like, I'm like, well, there's, you know, I'll take a picture of it just from the side with my face. And then in my head, I went, well, don't, don't do that because every Photoshopping idiot is going to go to work on this and it's just going to be terrible. Exactly. (laughs) And, uh, and nobody's going to, nobody will Photoshop in ice cream. I know that nobody will Photoshop in like a nice ice cream cone for me. No, it'll be, and again, but again, you don't have to Photoshop this because it, it looks, honestly, it looks like a cock. I mean, you should just add, the only thing you would do is like put a thought bubble over it that says, hi, I'm a cock. Like that would be the only thing <laughs> that would make sense to do if you're going to Photoshop that photo, if we took that photo, but we didn't. And my favorite part is Lily was taking photos of me talking into this. I don't know. If those were her personal collection, I don't know what those, you know, there's no, there's no reason to have those. I post it later. All right. If it's not, I don't. Well, then you will not be posting it later because none of those were good photos. I was talking while you were snapping away. Well, I, I disagree, quite frankly. So the point is, uh, I'm hoping there won't be clicking this week. I mean, I'm assuming there won't be. I mean, I shouldn't assume anything, but I'm hoping that there won't be because we've gone with this different setup. We're still using Lily's laptop, but we're using my microphone. Now, if there turn, turns out to be fucking clicking after this, then we call an exorcist. Honestly, it's really the only thing we do. We get Father Karras in here, and then he fucking takes whatever it is out of your computer, and he jumps out the window, and he rolls down the stone staircase. That's the only fucking thing I can think of. Um, because, fair. yeah, because I, I, that if there is clicking, it is pretty clear that my mother sucks cocks in hell. I mean, there's really the only... <laughs> it's the only solution I can think of. Um... So hopefully that's gone. I mean, but I will tell you this, we have certainly traded quality for getting rid of the clicking because I, we've heard some of the playback here, at least when we were doing sound checks and I sound like I am in your fucking living room. I mean, I I just sound, I, and I'm, so I'm now even sitting further back from the cock at this point and trying just to make sure my voice hits it instead of talking right into it. I'm trying to talk past it and over it. So here, yeah, I'm, I'm not talking directly into a cock. I'm talking directly past a cock as if the cock were just listening in a group at a party. <laughs> there's, I'm talking, there's four of us in a group and we're having a chat about politics and there just happens to be a cock like lurking, waiting to hear exactly what I have to say about Ted Cruz, um, which I, I don't have anything to say about Ted Cruz just yet. I'm waiting to see what he's all about. <laughs>
You gotta be fucking kidding me. How does that guy get the balls to run for president? How does he get the balls to do anything? How does he get the balls to wake up in the fucking morning? It's, you know why? He's got that insulated group. And again, let's be honest, as we've talked about, fucking politics is a joke. I mean, nobody cares about you at all. The president doesn't care about you. Congress doesn't care about you. Judges, any of those people, they don't give a flying fuck. So don't vote. Let's never vote again. But actually, no, bullshit. We have to vote because if you don't vote, Ted Cruz will be president by a vote of like one to nothing. Like literally, that'll be that'll be it. One guy, he'll vote for himself. What if I convince everybody in the world not to vote except Ted Cruz and Ted Cruz votes and he wins one to nothing? A shutout because then he could run on that. That's a mandate, right? That's got to be a goddamn mandate if you win by a shutout. Even if the fact was everybody else was just staying at home because they wanted to protest the fact that you and your I, I, like now. And again, I don't know much about Ted Cruz. I don't. The only thing I know is. He's Canadian, so he shouldn't even be running for fucking president, right? Isn't that true? He was born in Canada? Yes. And this is, he, wasn't he one of the birth certificate idiots? Wasn't he one of the, you know, I demand to see Obama's birth certificate? And he's not really running. He's distracting people. Well, he's doing that again to but try to get. What he's doing is they put him out, let him run this, and then they can go, look over here, look over here at the tits, and then there's like really bad shit happening over there. Right. Everybody gets mad at that idiot because yeah. that's what drives me crazy is everybody on Facebook, they're just like, uh, uh, you know, oh my God, I can't believe this guy. I can't believe, and, and then talk, his dad, I guess, was an illegal alien. And I mean, his real name is Raphael. I mean, like all this literally in it because there's no, you can't fool anybody like that, 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 you know, for long. I mean, but now you can't fool anybody for 10 seconds. He's looking to get a job on Fox. Exactly. So- well, I mean, I, I saw somebody, they say that it was, I think it was Rachel Maddow who said, uh, Ted Cruz today declared his candidacy for vice presidency of the United States. Like, that's all he's trying to do is gather a base, enough people to where he gets to get put on a ticket. And I don't even know why he gets put on a ticket because he's never going to be president. All right. That's that's, you know, because there's a Z in his last name. So we all know that, Um, you know, we haven't had a president with a Z in his last name since James Harrison. So I don't. uh, (laughs) And Jimmy Carter's. So. Uh, but, but what, but what I can tell you about Ted Cruz is he's not going to be president, but he's, he's hoping the only thing is if the actual Republican, like if Jeb Bush wins the nomination and he goes, Hey, you know what? I'm going to need somebody along for the ride who makes sure that anti-vaccinators go ahead and follow me. Like, <laughs> cause isn't Ted Cruz. He's also like, he's a climate change denier and he's anti-vaccine. He's just, you know who he is, dude. He's like, he's the dark web. That's who he, he's the dark web. <laughs> He's the dark web running for president. That's fucking crazy. Anonymous should go after him. Like, you can't even, there's not even anything to dig up in this guy's past. That's the thing. Ted Cruz has nothing that you could dig up and go, hey, we found this on you. Answer for it. No, all of his crazy is on the surface. Anything that he's got buried underneath it has got to be fucking bananas. I mean, it's got to be fucking bananas. He might have like a, like a Chinese sweatshop in the basement of his house or something. Like, I mean, that, you know, it's got to be something that really weird because all of his mainstream policies are so fucking crazy. Like I said, literally, he declared that he was going to run for president and then they, his real name's Raphael. He was born in Canada and his dad's an illegal immigrant who thinks that atheists should be put in camps. Yeah. Good run. You had a good run at presidency and it had ended in a day. Good for you. It's over. I mean, you... <laughs> You have been marginalized immediately. He had no fucking chance, but yet he's going to continue to plot along. And here's the worst part of it. This is what drives me crazy. Why would any of of the networks pay attention to this motherfucker? Like, why does he get any platform? Why does he get to talk? Why does he get any base? Why do you give him the opportunity to explain himself? I wouldn't even care about one position the guy had. If he had anything he had to say, if he was like, well, here's the thing, how I feel about that. I'd go, how do you feel about these 10 things that you've already talked about? Like I, (laughs) once you explain you're fucking crazy, then maybe I'll understand the rest of the shit you bring to the fucking table. And it just, and and it's for all of them. It's not just Ted Cruz. It's for any idiot. It's for anyone who's got some policy before they were able to say, well, here's Because again, nobody has any fucking ideas. Nobody has anything that they're looking to do to change, to make anything better. Ted Cruz is running on the policy of I'm going to dismantle everything that's happened in the past eight years. Again, it's all of these people who are saying, I'm going to change all of the stuff. Like uh, he's going to, uh, every word of Obamacare is going to be repealed. I'm going to take care of that. I'm going to do this. And, and I, I'm going to, I'm going to talk to the snow miser and the heat miser and mother nature and make sure we don't have any more climate change here in America. And I'm also going to talk to ladies and make sure they keep their legs crossed and don't have those babies, those pesky babies. Well, actually, no, they can have those babies. They can't kill those babies, but make sure you're married when you do it. Oh my God. Shut up. Shut up. Let me ask you something. How did Ted Cruz get over the wall we built between us and Mexico when uh, George Bush was president? How did that happen? <laughs> did he come from Canada? Well, that's right. 
fuck. <laughs> we built the wall in the wrong place. God damn it, we could have got Bieber out too. Fuck. Bieber's in. I'm in. I'm all Bieber. I'm team Bieber. Dude, if, if if I was 20 and like cameras followed me around and I was on TV, all the dumb shit I had to tell you about when I was 45, you would have seen then and hated me. <laughs> Seriously, now I tell you those things that I did and you're just like, dude, that's kind of fucking funny. Well, if you'd have seen me doing it live when I was 20, if TMZ was following me around, you'd been like, that guy's a fucking jagoff. And it's like, yes, a jagoff duck. <laughs> I was just setting the groundwork for the job I was going to get in the future. And that's me, baby. I am, a, I am the voice of jagoff duck on the internet. I, I picture Jagoff Duck just being crudely animated, like when Bart did Homer and he made like Angry Homer, the fucking co the comic strip. So that uh, Jagoff Duck would be like this crudely animated duck, and I'll just be, and but I will talk like this. Like I won't, I won't affect any sort of voice. I won't have like a fucking because I can't do Donald Duck. I, 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 when I think of the moments of my life I've wasted trying to do Donald Duck's voice with that, <laughs> I can make the noise. You know what? I sound like Donald Duck drowning. Like, I can't do his voice. Like, I can't say actual words if I can just make noises like he's being strangled. Like, if, if somehow Mickey Mouse came home and saw Donald Duck going down on Minnie, it would sound like that. That's the impression I do. There you go. That's me. That's, I can't do Donald Duck talking, but I can do him going down on Minnie and Mickey coming in and discovering him and then strangling him to death. That's my impression. And I will tell you this. That is a specialized impression. You're not going to get that anywhere else. No, you're not. No. <laughs> and yeah, I'll tell you what, if I had done that on stage as a middle act, I'd be headlining today. <laughs> Instead, I had standards. I saved Jagoff Duck for my 50th birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Holy God, what a mess. So the bottom line is we got a new microphone and you're probably hearing me as if I was really sitting right inside your fucking skull. I, Cause we listened back to the playback and Lily's like, I'm going to try to normalize it and compress it and do whatever the fuck I can when we're done. But, uh, but don't hold out any hope. And I'm like, <laughs> all right. You did. You said abandon all hope. Ye who talk into this microphone. <laughs> I, don't think I, said that I think you may have, and I'm not talking into it. I'm talking past it now. So, I mean, hopefully it's changing it up. I don't know what you guys are fucking hearing. Um, but your, your ears could be bleeding at this point. I, and, uh, and you know what? I yelled fuck in this show and that's the first time I've yelled in, in like fucking weeks. No, right. Not. I don't yell on this show. <laughs> I might get a little bass in my voice. You know, it's funny. Jill thinks Jill, Jill and I will talk and like, and I'll, and I'll get serious and I'll say stuff and she goes, don't yell at me. And I'm like, you've seen me yell. Yeah. This, this is not yelling. I, you know, and I mean, look, she's right. Cause I mean, I, I'll be like, I'll get kind of intense or I'll, uh, and I'll, I'll, I get, I'll get flustered or whatever. I'm, uh, folks, I'm an idiot. That's the point. But, uh, but if we talk and I'll be wind up talking to her and I'll be like, no, you don't understand. Here's the thing. And she's like, don't yell at me. And I'm like, it's not yelling, dude. I've, you've seen me yell. You've seen windows shatter because I yelled. You've seen hotel desk clerks hide because I've yelled. There's no way that this is yelling. Uh, but you know, to her, I, it is yelling because she doesn't like any loud noises at all. I can tell you that. Uh, she's easily she's easily frightened by loud noises. <laughs> and so we talk all the time. Like she'll be like, you know, when I'll say stuff or I'll be sarcastic and she'll give me like a look and I'll, and I'll be loud. And then I'm and and in my head, I'm like, why did you pick me? I, I mean, <laughs> you've listened to the show. You know who I am. You know, I'm just a jag. I'm a jag off. Literally, I am. I am that guy. I mean, I'm I'm I can be a sweet guy and I can be a nice person and I'm certainly feeling and I'm caring and I'm loving. But at the same time. Uh, I'm, I'm one person walking in front of me the wrong way and looking at me the wrong way from losing my fucking mind. I mean, I just am. And I try not to be, and look, we're much better at that. Thanks to Shannon. We're throttling it down. We're trying not to be that guy, but that guy still lives in here. I mean, I, you know, I used to be a house with one tenant, that guy, not more of an apartment complex. And there's a bunch of different guys living in there, but that guy still keeps a place. He still lives here. And I tell you what, if somebody knocks on the door, they're going to see him. He's going to come out. <laughs> He might not even have to get the door knocked on. He might just go ahead and open the window and fucking scream out occasionally because shit's happening outside that he doesn't fucking agree with. But he's still in there. Uh, we had a thing. We had a, oh, I'll tell you, or we went to Vegas this week. Jill and I were in Vegas last week. And I, by the way, I got to do this really fast. Uh, there is a small segment of you I need to apologize to. And so I will apologize to you now. Last week in Vegas, uh, I'll, I'll talk more about the trip, but let me, I want to deal with this right off the top. Uh, we were there from Monday through Friday. I think it was Thursday morning. And I told Jill I was going to do this. I said, I'm going to do this at some point this week. And she's like, are you sure that's a good idea? And I go, yeah, I think it'll be funny. 
So Thursday morning, uh, I checked in on Facebook from the Vidara Wedding Chapel. <laughs> and uh, the Vidara is a property uh, that's where we stayed when we were in Vegas. And, uh, and I checked in, and, I, and all I wrote was, good morning, and what are you doing today? And I put it on Facebook. And the plan all along was to put that up. And I figured that that we would all have a, a jaunty laugh and 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 think it was fun, and people would be like, "Come on!" and like kind of doubting back and forth. You know, it would, be, it would be cute. And then literally an hour later, I was going to check in from the Clark Family Courthouse in Nevada, <laughs> Clark County Family Courthouse, and just write, "It didn't take." <laughs> that was the plan all along. So I posted the uh, the check-in from the Vidara. We were still in our room. We were heading out for the day, and I posted, I just wrote, good morning, and what are you doing today? Uh, and I and she's like, honey, that's terrible. And I said, it'll be funny, and she's like, you sure? And I go, yeah, trust me. Five minutes after it went up, in, it, it, it was up five minutes, I had 55 likes and 10 comments um, of people saying, oh my God, so happy for you. It's so great, congratulations. <laughs> she didn't even get to approve it for her timeline. Cause that was, I, I mainly, look, I'm a jag off as we know. I wanted it on her timeline more than anything else. I mean, I, you know, cause you guys, I figured would get it and we'd all have a laugh, but I kind of was interested to see what the people that she knew would be, you know, would say or think, or I, and that guy. Cause I thought it would be funny. Uh, so I put it up thinking, again, thinking we would, because I, I think of you guys as knowing me and, and knowing us and knowing the situation. So I, 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 don't know, I don't know what I thought. I honestly just thought it would be fun and for an hour and we'd all have fun with it. Well, I wasn't so much concerned with Facebook because everybody was very, but everybody was very nice. And I, and I started to kind of have these pangs of guilt, like, oh man, in an hour, these people are going to be pissed. You know what I mean? Because it's like, it's because it's just a shitty thing to do to go like, yay. And then an hour later, just go, and, and everybody realizes they were, they were suckered in, you know, and, and they thought it was a beautiful thing because, you know, that's really nothing to joke about when it does happen. If it does happen, it's a nice thing. But I mean, at the same time, you know, you're, you're, you shouldn't be fucking, because again, people are invested. People who listen to the show are invested in me and me and Jill and me and Lily. And, and so they want to think that they're, they know what's going on and they're part of my life. So to, to totally fucking bamboozle them and set up a bunch of palm fronds and then have them step into a hole, that seems kind of shitty. <laughs> well, that would be. I'm sorry? That would be shitty, having them stepping in a hole. Are you sure? Yeah, this is just funny. Well, then I'm going to have to go get those palm fronds gathered up and fill that <laughs> hole because that was what I was planning on doing next. Uh, well, essentially, I put up a bunch of virtual palm fronds over an internet hole and everybody stepped into it. Uh, and so, so people, so here's the thing on Facebook, everybody kind of jumped in really quickly. Um, what I didn't anticipate was the four congratulatory texts <laughs> I got from friends <laughs> who actually know me. <laughs> and cause uh, honestly, the first thing I did was I texted Max and I go, don't panic at this post that's on Facebook. <laughs> I'm just, I'm, we're just goofing around in an hour. I'm going to say we're in divorce court. And, uh, and he's like, all right, he goes, I didn't even see this. Po I didn't know what you're talking about. And I go, don't, I go, just trust me. I go, I, you know, just, and he's like, okay. So, uh, within 10 minutes, like I said, in five minutes, I had 55 likes, I think it was, and then 10 comments. And then I got four texts from friends like private texts. And so I, I'm, I, I'm not even joking. I'm sitting in my room and I started to sweat. Like I, I just, like I got a beads of sweat on my forehead and Jill's like, are you okay? And I go, well, this is, I, I didn't anticipate this. Like I didn't think everybody yeah. would kind of run with it so quickly. And she's like, do you still think this is funny? <laughs> and I'm like, probably not. I said, I think I'm going to take it down. She goes, yeah. And I go, yeah, I go, I think I'm going to, I think, I think the fourth congratulatory text from an acquaintance was the one that made me go, I should probably stop joking around about this. And, uh, and so I actually posted in the comments of it. I go, Hey, I was just having some fun. I'll be taking this down now in case anybody saw that. And then I, I wound up deleting it. 
Um, and, but the worst part was having to write like text back people and go, Hey, I was just, I was just having a little fun and I, you know, I'm just goofing around. And, and then like my friend Rye is just like, well, then a pox on both your houses, you know, like he <laughs> awesome. literally, <laughs> and that made me think so, so a small pocket of you saw it and gave me congratulations. And there were some, there were some of you were like Pixar didn't happen. And some of you were just, you know, which is fine. You were goofing around, but there were some, there were genuine people who were. Because there are, you know, there are, as I've said, there are people out there who think we already are. So, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, so I, I, it was people out there. So I want to, I want to throw out a, like a kind of, cause I, I, cause then Max, like an hour later, he, he writes me and he goes, where's this post I heard about? And I said, I took it down. I go, people went fucking crazy. And he just goes, wasn't that the point? I said, well, yeah, I wanted to be silly. I go, yeah. but I didn't think everybody was going. I said, dude, I started to get congratulatory texts from people. And he goes, those bastards. <laughs> and I went, no, dude. I go, that's the point. I go, I'm the bastard because I tricked them into doing that. Like he was, he was kind of giving me comeuppance for like, what did you expect to happen? And so I just said to him and I go, no, I go, dude, I go, I, it, I go, that was the point. But at the same time, I didn't want to fucking hurt people's feelings. You know what I mean? I, I go, it just, it seems kind of, and I mean, nobody's feelings were hurt, but you would, after an hour, if you got suckered in by that, you know, I don't want to Rick roll everybody. Like I said, I type, I told Max, I go, dude, I'm not Johnny Knoxville. I go, I, you know, especially cause I'm not a prank guy at all. I fucking hate pranks. I hate crank calls. I hate all that dumb shit, but I thought it would be cute and fun. And, uh, no, it was, it was neither of those things. It was taken seriously immediately and everybody was heartfelt and wrote me nice things. And so I didn't, I didn't want to be that guy who surfed emotions for an hour and then went, ha ha, you know, I'm not Nelson Muntz. Ha ha. So I didn't want to do that. So anybody who saw that and commented and, uh, and I've handled the people who texted me, but I mean, the people who saw it and commented, I want to make sure you know that I apologize because it kind of just, it disappeared. And then in my head, I'm like. Should I put up, put up a post explaining why I took it down? And I'm like, no, just fucking take it down. The damage has been done, you idiot. Right now, 80 people think you're a dick. So that's, well, and let's put it this way. 80 people thought I was a dick for that post. It's exponentially larger when you take into account all the other things I've done in my life. But for that post, I can live with the 80 people. And so I send this out to you, 80 people. Uh, sorry about that. I was just having fun, I thought. But instead, I was, uh, I, I did a dumb thing. Because I, and literally, I actually, before I even put it up, I made sure that I could check in from the Clark County Family Courthouse. Like, I made sure it was a place on Facebook and it would come up. So I, I, I'm like, good, I'm going to do this. And then I'll check in in an hour and just write it didn't take. Nope. It, it lasted all of 10 minutes and I had to fucking take it down. So thank you for your well wishes. I'm sorry they were for naught. <laughs> Uh, so I'm in Vegas last week. It was, it was, uh, it was, it was amazing. It was really fun. We, um, Jill's son was going to Vegas, her oldest son. And he, he said to me, like, which was crazy around Christmas when I was there, he was telling me he was going to Vegas and we were at, at Jill's place when we had Christmas dinner. And he was saying that I should drive up to Vegas and meet him and we could hang out and bet games and watch March Madness. And I thought that was a great idea, but uh, you know, I, I would love it if Jill could come in. It just happened to be Jill's birthday week. So I had been talking about coming to Milwaukee for her birthday week and spending it there. But I said to her, I go, you know, would you want to go to Vegas? And she said, absolutely. It's harder for her to get away on a Monday because of her work schedule. So she, that's why she usually comes to me on Tuesday nights. So we planned it where she could come to Vegas on Tuesday night, and then we would be there the rest of the week. But then as we looked, she started to kind of get antsy. It, it, kind of, it was actually really cute because... We were going to go on Tuesday night, and then she's like, what if I came in, like, earlier on Tuesday? Like, if I arrange my work schedule to come in earlier? And I'm like, yes, that would be cool. Let's do that. So we had already booked a Southwest flight, so then we had to change it. We are going to change it to earlier on Tuesday. And then she's like, well, what if I came in, like, Monday night? Like, if there was a way I could, like, maybe work extra on the weekend, and then I wouldn't have to go in on Tuesday, and I could come in on Monday night. Because then I could be there on my actual birthday. And I said, yes, that would be perfect. So go ahead, whatever you need to do, go ahead and make the schedule work. That would be fine. And this is the conversation she and I have all the time, because... Uh, I can do whatever the fuck I want. I mean, I, you know, I literally, I, I deliver people sporks. I, I can make a phone call and go, Hey, I'm not coming in for the next three days. And they'll be like, great. Cause there's always some other illegal immigrant who wants to go ahead and take the fucking reins and make some cash. But you know, Jill has a real fucking job. And so it's harder for her to get away. So whenever she and I are planning our, our travels, I'll say to her, I'm, I, I, I can come there for eight days. She can only come by me for three because she has to do it between work, which makes it harder for us. But at the same time, we have a general idea. Like, 
she's almost always on the same flights. Like, you know what I mean? She's going to get to know the fucking flight crews because she flies in on the same Tuesday and she flies out the same night on Friday. So she can just walk in and be like, hey, cat fight Jill, good to see you, have a seat. So she started to kind of wonder about Vegas and she's trying to figure out, and I, and I was like, well, why don't, are you going to come to me? I said, if you come to me, we can drive in or we can fly in together. And, and she's like, well, why wouldn't I just meet you there? I said, great. And then finally she's like, well, what if I came in earlier on Monday even? And, I, and she, she keeps saying those things to me like I'm ever going to say no. Like I'm ever just... <laughs> No, I, I don't think I want to spend another eight hours with you. That doesn't make any sense. Of course, fucking come in, come here, move here, do that. That's all I want. You don't have to fucking negotiate with me for time that you're going to spend with me. It's fine. Just come here. Uh, and by the way, that right there, that's, she would then say, don't yell at me. Um, <laughs> because <laughs> I don't because I get animated and I start being that guy and then she's like don't you don't have to yell I'm like dude that's just that's just me I got news for you that's normal me I'm not fucking yelling um so she negotiates it to where she's going to come in on Monday and we were trying to figure out where we were going to stay for the week and we had looked at she had heard about the Aria and heard it was a really nice property but then we looked at the Vidara which was like the Aria's little sister but it was it was like 400 bucks a night for certain rooms and there were all these things because we looked the first thing we looked at was a panoramic suite. Now, if you don't know what that is, it's a, uh, essentially it's a room that has windows from the front door of the room all the way around the room. Uh, and not, not a, not a 360 and you know, a 180, anything that faced outside was a window, a giant window. Uh, and everything that faced inside obviously was a wall because if you had windows facing inside, well then how are you doing people in the other room? That doesn't make any sense, right? <laughs> hey, everybody. Uh, so instead they figure you want a view of the strip rather than a view of the stripping in the room next door to you. So that's fine with me. And so we looked at the panoramic suite. And like I said, it was like 480 bucks a night. Now that sounds awesome. Uh, except for the fact that, uh, you know, I'm half of this equation. Like Jill, Jill, <laughs> Jill could probably pay for it because she's got a fucking amazing job. But for me to kind of gravy train in, I'm kind of like, hey, is there a broom closet that has like a fucking <laughs> wall I can lean on? Because that's the room I'm looking for. That's my price range. Uh, so we looked at the Vidara and we didn't know if we liked that. We, the, it was the Aria that was more expensive, but the Var Vidara looked good. And then she, you know, we, we fly certain airlines and we're in certain rewards programs. And so she wound up getting a deal for the Excalibur. Like they were like, hey, what if you paid this? And it was ridiculously low. Like, I mean, to the point where in my head I go, are we actually staying there or do we have to work there during the day and then sleep there at night? Because it was that low of a rate. And she said, well, why don't I just book that? And so she did. She, this is when she was still thought she was coming in on Tuesday. So we booked that Tuesday through Friday. Then we started to make adjustments to her schedule. She was coming in earlier Tuesday. She was coming in later Monday. And then she was coming in earlier Monday. So we needed a place to stay on Monday. And I said, look, that one day you're coming in, that's your birthday. Let's make it special. Let's, let's look at the Aria, the Vidara. Those are the rooms we liked. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So we did. We looked at the Vidara. And like I said, it was 480 a night or something like that for the panoramic suite. Then there was a corner suite. Then there was a, you know, a suite. You know how they do it. And uh, I'm trying to remember. It was panoramic suite. And just below that was executive suite. And then below that was corner suite. Corner suite has like one window looking out at the strip. And uh, we checked. And for some reason, because also I will tell you this, Mark Zuckerberg is, uh, is a genius. Because Facebook follows you all over the fucking place on the internet. And it knows where you've been and it knows what you've seen. Now that's creepy and weird. Uh, but at the same time, for them, it's really fucking smart. Because I started to get ads for the Aria and the Vidara on my Facebook page. Because I had visited it on my laptop. Because again, if you ever think that anything you're doing on the internet is secret, you are fucking wrong. <clears throat> I don't care how many firewalls you have. I don't care how many proxies you use. Uh, they, someone knows where you are and what you're doing at all times. So my point is don't do anything dumb on the internet because eventually <laughs> people will find you out. Uh, so, which means don't steal Jagoff Duck. That's what I tell you right now, because I will have Mark Zuckerberg find you and you'll start seeing ads for Jagoff Duck on your goddamn Facebook wall. And they're going to go, oh, man, Mike knew exactly what I was doing. Yes. You know what? It won't even be ads for Jagoff Duck because Jagoff Duck doesn't exist just yet in the incarnation that I think it should. But if you steal it and you start working on it, if you even type the words Jagoff Duck into your computer or in some way try to create it on your Facebook wall, there will be just a suggested ad and it'll just be a mean face of me. 
and it'll just say, I know what you're thinking. Stop stealing Jagoff Duck. That's what it will say. Because <laughs> me and Zuckerberg are tight. We're very tight. Stop stealing Jagoff Duck. Is that the name of the show? That might be the name of the show this week. Uh, so, we started looking at the rooms at the Vidara. And we happened to find that the corner suite, because it was a Monday we were coming in. And that was another thing. You have to adjust. You know, they, once you look, they keep then trying to entice you to come back and give you these things. So, we got a deal. And it said, hey, there's a corner suite available at the Vidara. And it was for half of the price that we saw. Which was, I... I she said that she's like, well, what do you think? I go, I go, I think we book it like immediately. Like, let's do it right now. She goes, are you sure? And I said, yeah. And we took the virtual tour. Like if you go to their website and you take their little virtual tour where you walk through the room and you take a look at it. And there were certain things that I, that I wanted in the room, but you had to get, you know, executive suite or fucking panoramic suite. But we said, she goes, honey, let's just get a corner suite. It's a nice room. It's, you know, we'll go there for my birthday and, and we're never leaving the room anyway. So let's just go in there and, and do that. I said, great. Look, as long as it had a bed, and a fucking shower two people could fit into, I was on board with it. That's fine. And honestly, if only one person got into the shower, that's fine, as long as the ceiling was high enough. So, <laughs> uh, I, I'm like, all right, well, you know, let's do that. So we wound up booking a suite at the Vidara, and it was a corner suite. So it was done, it was booked, we were locked there, we were locked at the Excalibur, and we changed our flights on Southwest. Now, I should tell you this, you know, folks, I'm a gold-level flyer on American. Do you know that? I'm, I, I don't know, I have a card, I'll take a photo of it, I'll put it up, you guys can see it. Uh, or, you know, just come up to me and ask me, hey, can I see your gold level flyer card for American Airlines? Because I carry it with me at all times. I flash it in restaurants. I show people everywhere. You know, just because I, and it carries with it a certain cachet. A certain non-silver cachet. Gold people. Well, Jill is a Southwest person. And she's got me flying Southwest quite a bit. Because we went ahead and... Uh, you know, all sorts of deals and she wound up getting a credit card and she got a bunch of miles and it, ju it just makes sense. And now that I've been flying Southwest, I'm spoiled because Southwest is a flying bus. Clearly, it's, it's a terrible airline because it is a flying bus. But at the same time, they, they still give you pretzels and you can change your flight up to 10 minutes before the time you fucking fly with no charge. They don't charge bag fees, but I don't give a fuck because I don't check bags anymore. But the most important thing, like I said, Jill and I have changed flights like eight times, and it hasn't cost us a goddamn dime. I tried to change a flight on American. It was $200 to change the flight. And then they wanted the $175 ticket price difference. So literally, it was like buying another round-trip ticket just to change the time, even though the other plane was half empty. What the fuck do you think you're doing? How do you get away with charging this? That's fucking crazy. That's Ted Cruz level, I'm running for president crazy. <laughs> so I'm a gold-level flyer, but I may let that expire this year because you know I have a ton of miles there, but they just make it so difficult to travel. And also, you know, when I fly with Jill, there's non-stops to Milwaukee. There's nonstops for her from Milwaukee to me. And I'm, you know, with American, I got to connect through Dallas or Chicago. And how many times have I fucking wound up late or missed a connection or been snowed in and, and had it all fucked up? Connections blow, man. They're just terrible. I've, you know, they're a fact of life and I have to deal with them on certain airlines. But, dude, if I fly to fucking her on Southwest, it's it just, I've been convinced to jump on board with them. Even though, again, it is a flying bus. It is goddamn awful. The worst thing is when you'll fly Southwest and they have a stop. And they're like, you can't get off the plane, but everybody else who's getting off gets off here. And now we have to do a head count of how many people are on this fucking plane. And then you can go get a sandwich and come back on the plane, but don't save any seats. I mean, like, dude, this isn't a fucking movie theater. It's a goddamn mode of transportation. Don't tell me not to save seats and tell me I can get off and you get to do a fucking head count. I'm not in kindergarten. I paid for the privilege of getting on this fucking death tube. It drives me crazy. And again, it's a flying bus. It's like this thing where they're like, hey, you want to go to Boston? No problem. We're going to stop in Charlotte and, and fucking Hartford. Yeah. And, and, and I get that it makes it cheaper and all the other stuff, the, you know, the being able to change a flight, but, and, and the flight crew is just, they, they try to be funny, dude, stop with the open mic night bullshit on the Southwest flight. I have never rooted harder for a plane crash than I have when a fucking waitress got on and sang some song when we were about to land. Jesus. She's like, you know, thank you for flying Southwest. Thank you for being the best. Oh my fucking God. Are you kidding? You're joking, right? Where's a fucking box cutter when I need one? Shut the fuck up up there. <laughs> I'm serious. 
They de- like they're trying to be funny and cute and they're singing and they're on the microphone and I don't I don't need a fucking floor show. You know why? I'm not on the floor. I'm in the goddamn sky. Take your fucking sky talent show walking. Bring me a fucking ginger ale and peanuts and let me listen to Tool. They're professional. I put them in my ears so I can hear them sing. They should be singing at 35,000 feet. Not you. You were in a blue fucking blazer. The only reason you took this fucking job was, again, so you could fly to Los Angeles for free periodically. You don't need to fucking debut your goddamn album for me. Ugh. Drives me crazy. It drives me crazy. There was some fucking dude. I, I woke up. And again, the majority of them are kind of nice. You know, I mean, I, I don't give a fuck. I put on my earbuds. I don't deal with the fucking sky waitress. But I was flying on Southwest and there was a dude. They have dudes. OK, on the on the, the crew. And look, I got no problem if a dude wants to get a job doing that job. You know, there's tons of gay dudes on America and they're all those guys and they're, and they're super nice. Everybody's friendly. Good. That's they know their place. There was a guy on Southwest and he was like a like a straight man and kind of a tough guy, like bodybuilder dude with a shaved head and like big forearms. And he's one of the sky crew. Like, shouldn't he be changing the tires and shit on the plane? So no, I'm not at all. You know why? Because he was a dick. I was asleep and they came by with the fucking snacks and I missed it. So then I woke up in the middle of it and uh, he had to walk by me and I, I looked at him and I go, hey, and you know, seriously, his name was Steel. S-T-E-E-L-E hyphen J-A-G-O-F-F. That's right. He was a fucking dick. <laughs> Steel Jagoff, which actually is not a bad name for a tribute band. That's a Steel, that's a Steel Panther tribute band and Steel Panther is a tribute band to fucking metal bands. Uh so Steel walks by me, I wake up and I put my hand in the air and he looks at me and I take out one earbud and I go, hey, did I miss the crunchies? Because they bring out like pretzels and peanuts. And I'm, I'm, look, I'm half asleep. Recognize that I'm half asleep. Maybe I don't have the word pretzel in my fucking vocabulary. I knew it, I was just joking. <laughs> but recognize that maybe out of a dead sleep, I said crunchies because, you know, I said crunchies. But I go, I go, hey, did I miss the crunchies? L- the most withering look I've ever received as if I asked him to prom and he was the head cheerleader. I mean, just this devastating fucking sloped Cro-Magnon brow crouched down in front of his eyes. And he looked at me and he goes, what are crunchies? Just, just dismissed me in three words out of a dead sleep. I asked for fucking, look, I'm sorry. I didn't say pretzels, motherfucker. You know what? If there was a gay dude, he would know exactly what it meant by crunchies. Cause I would go, are there crunchies? He'd go crunchies. And he'd go get the tray and he'd shower me with pretzels and, and peanuts. And he'd probably come in his pants for the privilege. But you steal, you fucking stare at me and you go, what are crunchies? Like you're like, you're the man with no name. Like you've got a tiny cigar in your mouth and a poncho around you. And you're going to shoot the noose out. What before they go to fucking hang me in the desert. You're not the man with no name. You're the man with the stupid name. You're steel. Get me some fucking pretzels and shut the fuck up and don't stare at me. Like I'm an idiot. Okay. I'm half asleep on your fucking plane. You work for me. I paid to get on here. Steel. You don't have to yell. <laughs> <laughs> So I fly Southwest now because of that. I don't know how the fuck I spun off into that. I backed away there. You guys may have not have heard me, but making, I have no idea. Making your reservations. Oh, changing the flights and all that kind of stuff. So we were, uh, oh, so, uh, well, fuck, no, but I was talking about something else. We did the Vidara, and then we were flying there, and then. Uh, you were fl- talking about changing all the flights and how great Southwest was because they let you change flights. I know, but I spun off into that somehow. How the fuck did I talk about Southwest? Because you said you like to travel, though. And you were changing flights for Jill to, to move there to get there early, and you went to the Aria. Look, I kept up this time. Literally, everybody out there right now is going, I wish the clicking would come back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so so we booked the, the, the thing. We booked the flights. We changed our flights. and Because, and, oh, that's what it was. We booked... We we wanted booking the Vidara because we we switched to Monday and then we booked earlier for a check in time. All right, there I just we go. Said that. Yes, you did. Uh, don't be. You don't have to yell, Lily. <laughs> I don't know. You don't have to yell, Jack. Uh, so, so I fly Southwest now, and we we booked the Vidara. And we booked a corner suite, but you know Monday is Jill's birthday. That was Jill's birthday. And so I, you know, I I wanted it to be special. It was, it was going to be special that we were going to be together anyway in the room. Uh, but the corner suite was nice. But then I get an email from them and uh, from the Vidara. And it says, hey, did you know that you qualify for an upgrade? What? 
and I open it up and it says, for just $28 more, you can upgrade your corner suite to an executive suite on Monday, March 16th, 2015. Just contact our concierge and make all of the arrangements. We thank you so much for choosing the Vidara slash Aria as your properties and hope you have the best time ever in Vegas. Well, like I said, we had looked initially at the panoramic suite and just below that was the executive suite. And then there was the corner suite, which was a nice room. But, you know, it's, it's Jill's birthday. I want to do something nice. So I contact the concierge and I said, hey, uh, I got this deal where they're offering me the upgrade regarding corner suite to executive suite. It says it's only 28 bucks. Is that a real deal? He's like, absolutely. You could have just handled it through the email. You could have booked it solely on there, but I'm happy to help you. Because again, he's a concierge. He wants to help. So uh, he takes me through it and he says, all right, we're going to go ahead and bump you up to an executive suite. It's only $28 more. Thank you so much for your time. And I said, all right, well, here's the thing. Uh, you know, we were looking at the room online. We took that virtual tour and there is, a, you know, one of the rooms on the virtual tour, it has, you know, the windows go all the way around yeah. in the panoramic suite. But even in the executive suite, it had a room where even in the, by the shower in the, in the restroom, there was a giant window that you could see out and see, you know, all of Vegas from the shower or from the tub. He's like, well, there is, there's one room like that with the executive suites. And I go, well, I'd like that room. And he goes, well, I can make a note of it, but unfortunately there's nothing we can do until you check in. Uh, and then when you check in, if it's available, we can give it to you. And he goes, but we kind of have to hold it out. And, and obviously it's for high rollers or whoever the fuck comes there because someone could come in and drop a ton of dough and they give them that room. And I understand that's how Vegas works. He goes, but you are bumped up to the executive suite. I said, great. Now, I didn't tell Jill, you know, because I don't want her to know. I want to surprise her on her birthday. Uh, because I think any of you who followed the show know exactly how much Jill loves surprises. <laughs> and for those of you who don't remember, she loves them as much as she loves me yelling. <laughs> so... uh I didn't tell her. So we were arranging where we were going to be there. We were trying to figure out the flights. And I was coming in from Los Angeles, which is an all, only an hour flight, but she had a four-hour flight from Milwaukee. But luckily, she was going nonstop, which makes no sense that she can go nonstop from Milwaukee. But when I from, uh, flew from L.A., I had to stop in Burbank, Santa Ana, and Ontario before I went. It seemed weird. That's like a weird puddle jumper, but I, all right, that's how they work it. Uh, I was actually flying from Burbank, so it was in a one-hour flight. But I wanted to call just in case there was some sort of weird delay because the room was in my name. So I had to make sure that I called the hotel to make sure that her name was on the room in case somehow she got there ahead of me. And it, it seemed unlikely, again, since I have a one-hour flight and she had a four-hour flight, but just in case there was some bullshit in Burbank and we weren't able to get out, I didn't want her sitting in the goddamn airport in Vegas, and I would tell her to just go ahead to the room and check in. Uh, so I called the concierge, and I'm like, look, I need to put the name Jill Bublitz on the room. Uh, so that she's able to check in just in case she's not with me. And uh, in case our flights don't coordinate, so I want to make sure that, and then the, you know, the guy's like, okay, that's fine. Uh, and, and we finish, and then he, before I hang up, he goes, hey, I've noticed that you've upgraded from a corner suite to an executive suite. I said, I have. I just want to make sure that it's on note there that I wanted to try to get the, the, you know, the, the window in the, in the shower where you can look out on the strip. And, and he says, well, uh, did you know that you're eligible for an upgrade? I said, well, I already cashed in the upgrade. And as a matter of fact, you just told me that I cashed in the upgrade. So, yeah, I'm, I'm in the executive suite. He goes, no. He goes, you're eligible for an upgrade to a panoramic suite. And the thing I love is when they give you that you're eligible. Did you know that we you, unbelievably you're eligible? When in reality, they should just go, it's Monday. There's nobody in the hotel. Uh, so he says, you're eligible for an upgrade to a panoramic suite, which was the initial room we looked at. Okay. And it was like 485 bucks for a night. I said, okay. I said, well, you know, I already, I already went to the executive suite, and that was 28 I said, so, I mean, I, I can't imagine what it is to upgrade to a panoramic suite. He goes, you know, you are eligible for an upgrade to the panoramic suite. It will cost you $12. And I'm, there was a beat, and I, I'm just like, I, I'm sorry, pardon me? He says, yeah, it's, it's $12 more. I said, so, you're, so for 40 bucks. I went from corner suite to executive, because I mean, it, it's a $240 difference when we were booking the room. He's like, yeah, I can get you into a panoramic suite right now for another $12 if you, if you want to do it. 
I said, uh, well, this may seem aggressive, but fuck yeah, I want to do it. Of course I do. <laughs> and he started laughing. And uh, I said, yes, do it. Done. Let's do that. I go, but I, I got to tell you, I, you know, I want to make sure, because again, the panoramic suite I know has the, the, the windows and stuff, but I want to, I really want the windows to go into the restroom. I go, is, is this, that's for the shower. Like, does the shower, because I mean, some, some of the shower doesn't look out the window, but there was a bathtub in some, in the virtual tour that we saw, it was right by the windows. He goes, yeah, there are some rooms in the panoramic suite that have that. I go, well, I want it. I go, if you're upgrading me, then let's do that and let's talk about how much I need to pay to get that. He goes, well, we can't guarantee it. He goes, but I'll be honest with you, I don't see any problem with you getting it. He goes, you made a note of that when you checked, when you made the initial reservation. He goes, so I will reinforce that right now and tell them that you absolutely want that. And I said, well, it's a birthday. And uh, I go, anything else that helps me get it? It's a honeymoon. Tell them anything that you got to tell them to make it uh, work for me. It is. And he's like, all right, well, I'll put all that. Absolutely. Well, and they'll, I'm sure they'll take care of you at the desk. So I, I, I upgraded to a panoramic suite. And I did not tell Jill. <laughs> because, again, you all know how much Jill enjoys surprises. And it's her birthday, so I know she's totally going to love this. So days go by and she and I are talking and we literally when we text, it's just like she'll be like 171 hours. Like it's just it's just be <laughs> anybody who's been in a long distance relationship knows what that's like. You know, you just you cannot wait to see the other person. And it is fantastic because it is like meeting for the first time all over again every time you see one another. But it also makes it that much harder when you separate because then it's just like, oh, my God, I we've started calling the time between the time we see one another business trips. Like when we're together, that's what real life is. But then after that, anything else is a business trip. Well, we're on a business trip for two weeks and then I will see you. But there's nothing I like more. There's nothing I love more. There's nothing I enjoy more. There's nothing I want more all the time. And it seems like such a weird thing. But in my head, I, I, I want to see her walking down the hallway with earbuds in, in a dress, getting off a plane. It's become I've accustomed to seeing her and it's and my heart swells up every time it happens. And it happens so often now because we're very good about it, which is great. I don't like dropping her off at the airport. Nobody likes saying goodbye. But it's almost worth it to see her come walking off the plane or walking down the hallway or walking out of the, the concourse in her dress with her earbuds in and, and, of course, staring at her phone, which is what she's doing when she walks down until she looks up and sees me and then she mouths the word hi. She doesn't say it. She mouths it. I mean, I, I could... I could film it from memory and I love it every time it happens. So, uh, but it's hard, man. It's, it's hard not seeing one another, but I, I knew for her birthday that she was going to come. It was going to be us together in Vegas and, and I couldn't wait to surprise her with what was going to happen. So we're texting one another, you know, a hundred hours. Oh my God, I can't wait. I'm going to see you. It's going to be so fantastic. And then it dawns on me, you know, it's her birthday. I want to do something even cooler. I mean, we got the panoramic suite, but I, I want if you know me, it's it, again, this is the weirdest thing. I'm, I'm all about the grandiose gesture. I like gestures, folks. I like, uh, I like entrances. I like, I like big fucking notes in an aria. I don't just need, uh, you know, I don't want Elliot Smith mumbling through a day. I, I want fucking Pavarotti hitting the fucking ceiling. Now, there's something to be said for Elliot Smith. I certainly love him. And uh, if he was here, I wouldn't kick him out of bed for eating crackers or stab him in the stomach. But... <laughs> As far as the grandiose birthday romantic gesture, give me Pavarotti over Elliot Smith. I, I think there's something to be said about giving someone an orchard rather than handing them a wilted daisy. That's all. That's me. So, uh, so I started thinking about other things I could do in the suite for her birthday. And I'm like, hmm. And I don't go crazy, certainly. Uh, but I wanted to have a birthday cake waiting for her. Now, uh, <laughs> I won't lie. Uh, what triggered the thought of me having the birthday cake in the room was me talking about being a splash guy on the podcast for the, uh, <laughs> a couple of weeks ago or last week or whatever it was. And remember, I'm like, I don't know if I could, I would like put, and I said, but you know, if I sit you down on a birthday cake and I just fucking eat it off you, I go, I'm in for that. That was literally the thought that made me go, I got to get a birthday cake in the room. Uh, so I call the concierge again, like literally he and I got to know each other on a first name fucking basis. This guy, Evan. So I call him up. And I was like, hey, look, here's the thing. I wanted to try to get a birthday cake in the room and I wanted to get uh, uh, and I wanted to get flowers in the room for her waiting for it. Cause she, and I will tell you this, um, Jill told me, don't get me flowers. She's like, do not 
don't send me flowers because I was, I was going to send them to her in Milwaukee. She's like, honey, I love you. Don't send me flowers because I'll get to enjoy them for like maybe half a day and then I'm coming to you. So it doesn't make any sense for me to have flowers here because they'll just, I won't get to enjoy them. And uh, what, what she meant was, don't send me flowers. What I heard was, don't send flowers here. Send flowers to Las Vegas where I can enjoy them. So I called the concierge. I'm like, dude, here's the deal. I need to have a dozen yellow roses in the room when I check in. Uh, because yellow roses are her favorite flower. Now, I, you, know, you know me. I usually go for a different, for a mix. But I found out what her favorites are. And that's, that's it. I've streamlined my choices to what she likes. And I make sure I do that. I wanted to make sure she had a dozen yellow roses in the room. So he's like, we can take care of that. We got a florist on site. I go, of course you do. You're fucking Vegas. Let's do this. So he's like, what do you want on the card? I told him exactly what I wanted on the card. And I, I've become very good at dictating the cards because I want to make sure I dictate the punctuation on the card. I Victor Borg the fuck out of those people because Jill, like one of the first cards she ever got, it's like, happy birthday, Jill. You'll always be my favorite girl. I love you, Jill. And I'm like, no, there's commas and all sorts of bullshit that you missed. What the fuck? I wasn't sending this via Old West Telegraph. It wasn't fucking, I wasn't telling Marshall Dillon there was going to be a gunfight, motherfucker. I was trying to convey how much I love somebody in a car with their fucking flowers from a distance. So I have to make sure I go, uh, you know, happy birthday, comma, Jill, capitalize the J, capitalize the HB. Like I fucking, I'm, I'm a pain in the ass. You know who I am? I, no wonder Steel hated me. I'm like the steel of dictating flower cards. That's who I am. So I fucking, I make sure that I did. And, but the concierge, Evan was totally cool and he understood what I wanted. And I totally made him hack and make it happen. And I said, and he's like, yeah, it'll be nice. It'll, it'll be waiting in the room. I said, good. He said, I don't know about a cake. He said, we have a bakery here, but I don't know if they do birthday cakes like that. And I don't know if they decorate. And I go, well, I don't want to fucking balloons and shit. I go, I just need like a nice cake. You know, one that my girlfriend's ass will fit in. And I didn't say that. <laughs> I should have said that to Evan. He would have known exactly what the fuck I meant. And, uh, and so he was like, well, I'll get back to you on the cake. And then I called again. We were kind of ping-ponging back and forth. And then finally Monday morning came when we were flying. And I was up. I went to the gym. And then she texted me. And she's like, oh, my God. And she sent me a picture of a cupcake. And she said, they, they gave me a cupcake at work and a happy birthday. And they were really nice. And she goes, I, you know. And she said her, her, the person she works with was like, yeah, you better make sure you bring that to Vegas, you know, and have some fun with it. And the woman's like, oh, my God. Jill's like, why would you say that? Um, and I said, cause they know me probably they know. <laughs> so I called the concierge to check on the birthday cake again. And they're like, man, you know what? They can do it, but it takes a 24 hour notice. I said, well, they told me Saturday they weren't sure if they could do it. And he goes, well, apparently they can now. I said, well, I can't, I don't have 24 hours. There's no way. And she goes, well, this is a different concierge. It wasn't Evan. She goes, maybe we can go this cause this is Monday morning. We're going to be there in like five hours. She's like, we can maybe go to stores around the area and see if they have a store bought cake. And I go, I don't want a fucking store bought cake. I don't want you to go get something that has a clown on it. Fuck that. And, uh, and you know, it's funny. I talk like that to people, not realizing that these are, you know, they're normal people. I just think that they know who the fuck I am. And so I'm just like, ah, fuck that. I don't want a clown cake. And she's just like, sir, I wasn't going to get your clown cake. I'm like, no, I didn't mean it like you were. So I said, uh, well, I said, do they have cupcakes at the joint next door? And she's like, well, yeah, I can double check and call you back. I said, please do. Uh, and then it was because I, I wanted, because again, Jill said, I wish I could bring this cupcake on the plane. I can't. And, uh, and so I'm just, I'm going to make sure I have cupcakes in the room. So then she calls me back. She's like, we've got chocolate, blueberry, strawberry, lemon, and something else. And I said, well, give me a strawberry, lemon, and a chocolate. And, uh, you know, because I figure, you know, if I can't get a whole cake to put Jill down in, I can at least get two cupcakes to just put on each of her ass cheeks, and then we're in. That's fine. Because, uh, <laughs> again, I, I, I don't know if I'm a splash guy. We found out two weeks ago. I wasn't sure if I was. Well, this was the week I was going to find out if I am. <laughs> It's not because I got then I can write off the business trip. It was a research project. <laughs> so, so I told him to give me those cupcakes and then fucking uh, my friend Paul Goble picked me up to take me to the airport because our friend Erica, who's very nice about taking me to the airport, could not. So Goble picks me up and we're talking and my phone rings in the fucking car and it's the concierge. And she's like, uh, Mr. Schmidt, I said, yeah, she goes, hey, I'm really sorry about this. Um, you know, we have your cupcakes and the strawberry lemon. Uh, it seems to have fallen. And I said, from grace <laughs> and she goes pardon me i go nothing what are you what are you talking about and she goes no it's it's fallen like i it, something happened and it got smashed in the box and i can't figure out why like it may have fallen off the desk or something when i wasn't here but i know i, I took a look inside at it and it's it's smushed i said okay well just you, you can just grab another she goes well that's why i'm calling this was the last strawberry lemon cupcake that we had <laughs> Right. 
And honestly, it's going to get smashed later anyway. <laughs> so, so I, but I, at this point, I figure I'm, I'm, you got to offer me something, right? As compensation, you got to come through for me. You got to say, you know, cause you're the concierge, you want to make me happy. So I said, oh man, I said, you know, that was honestly the chocolate was an afterthought. I really wanted the strawberry lemon. She goes, well, I'm sorry. That's what we don't have. Is, would you want one of the other flavors? I said, well, yeah, I mean, I guess the blueberry works for me. I go, but you know, I was, I kind of wanted the strawberry lemon and I'm waiting for her to go, well, that's okay. We'll give you the strawberry lemon and we'll give you like a dozen chocolates. You know, I, mean, I just anything to make it good, but no, man, she, she didn't pick up on any of my fucking signals at all. And she's just like, okay, well, I'll have a blueberry and a chocolate and they will be waiting in your room. She doesn't even offer to keep me the, the fucking smashed strawberry lemon, which honestly, that's pre-smashed. That could have been the first one of the splash experiment. Let's do that one. And it's not so fresh and inviting. I love strawberries. I love lemons. Put them together in an unholy alliance and I am on board. But instead, she's like, you'll get blueberry and chocolate. I'm like, all right, fine. And then I hook up the phone. I look at Goble. I go, did I handle that right? He goes, yeah, you, you hinted like 10 times and they didn't get it. I go, they should want to give me free cupcakes or something, right? Shouldn't they want to do something for me? And he's like, yeah, they should, but I, I don't, you tried everything you could. I go, yeah. He goes, she was just kind of dense. I go, well, I hope the cupcakes aren't as dense. <laughs> uh, and quite frankly, I actually wish it was dense because it would have survived the toppling off of the desk. Probably would have saved itself. So, uh, but I was excited, man. I, you know, because now I'm going to the airport. I'm meeting Jill. I get on the plane and uh, it was a smooth flight. Even though it was Southwest, no steel. He was not on the flight crew. He did not get to yell at me over crunchies. <laughs> I landed in Vegas, and I was just about 10 minutes ahead of Jill. I get to her gate, and she, you know, it was funny. I will tell you this about Southwest flying bus. It has a lot of technical problems. Like, on American, I would sometimes be late because of weather and stuff. But, dude, Southwest, because it is the, the little brother of all the other airlines... Often they'll land and they'll be like, all right, well, they're trying to find a gate for us. And as soon as they find a gate for us, they'll be able to get you off this plane. And then they'll do four laps around the airport and you get off the plane 45 minutes later. It's fucking weird. Another thing that Southwest does, this happened to Jill. She texted me once. She's like, honey, we're supposed to leave here at 1245. I said, yeah. She goes, they just had an announcement that they don't have a crew. <laughs> I'm like, what? She goes, there, there's no crew. Like, there's no, they don't have a crew for this plane. Like, there's a plane but they can't put us on it because they don't have stewardesses and stuff. And I'm like, holy God. And that kind of shit happens with Southwest all the fucking time where they're like, hey, uh, sorry, our pilot is at brunch. And you're like, well, no, wait a minute, motherfucker. There's a departure time. There, this is not estimated. We're all supposed to be moving. We're supposed to be in the air right now. And I love that thing where they're always like, well, we'll make up time in the air. Well, then that's great. Why didn't we just leave on time and get in here early, motherfucker? Well, you know why? Because then you'd have to spend 45 minutes looking for a fucking gate. God damn it. I don't understand the fucking airlines and their meticulous timing, but that's how it works. So I got there and then I beat Jill by about 10 minutes and uh, I saw her get off the fucking plane with her earbuds on. And it's exactly, it's, it's, it's one of the things I love, uh, is just seeing, cause she's there. She's real. She's real. So we walked to the airport in Vegas, which has gotten, you know, I haven't been in the airport in Vegas since, since probably 2005. Cause I, you know, I haven't been, I would, last time I was there, I think I was working on funny money. Um, God damn, is it huge? I mean, it's huge. In 2005 was the first time I had to deal with the offsite rental car thing because you used to be able to rent cars right at McCarran. Um, but now you, we walked outside of McCarran to go to find the rental car shuttle. The taxi line, there, there had to be 95 people in the taxi line. And, uh, and I know you're thinking, Mike, why wouldn't you say 100? That would seem high. <laughs> so I'm going to estimate there were 95 people waiting for taxis. And the thing was, I'll tell you this, it wasn't like they were waiting long because there was nothing but a constant stream of fucking taxis loading people. It's not, you know, the whole town is built on it. So there might be a long line. Whenever you see a long taxi line or whatever in Vegas, realize you're not going to be in it that fucking long because it's bang fucking bang. They are there and they are taking you away. And uh, as I found out in Vegas, if you're in, if the, I will, if you're in this, ta the taxi line in Caesars, it's a lot longer, but it's a lot faster than the one at the Excalibur, when it, which is shorter, but there's less taxis because they go to where the traffic is. You're still moving at a decent clip, but some places it's fucking light speed. So uh, I see her. We walk to the airport. We go and we get on the shuttle, go to get our rental car. We only rented a car for the first two days. Uh, because then her son was going to be in town on Wednesday and we figured we'd cab it and we'd walk all over the place. But also the reason we rented a car was because on Tuesday we were going to go off campus. Uh, we made the decision because, you know, Jill's not like a gambler 
And I'm not really either. I'll bet sports, but I don't play table games really. We might have fun in the slots, maybe walking by, but I'm not a degenerate like my friend Lily. So uh, <laughs> I, have sat, I have sat at a slot machine with Lily for hours before the Dean Martin's party machine. I saw it every time I saw it. I thought of you this, this weekend, this past week. Did you play it? We did not play Dean Martin. Oh, go, 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 go. <laughs> so every time I saw it, I thought of you. We would walk past it. So uh, we were in the airport. We get over to, to rent our car because, again, we're going off campus to go to. Uh, we don't gamble. So we were going to go to Hoover Dam and to the rocks. We were going to go visit cliffs in the yeah. desert. Red Rock Conservation Joint. I don't think it's a joint. But, uh, but it's the whole, it's the desert. So we were going to go out there and take a look. And there's a scenic drive. And we are going to walk trails and try to find a place to have sex behind a boulder. So uh, that was the plan. That was the initial plan. Sex behind a boulder? Yes. What was your plan? Well, my, my plan was sex in front of the boulder. I don't give a fuck, quite frankly. But to give Jill a modicum of, of you know, making sure that she wasn't seen, sort of, I was going to go behind the boulder just so she could relax a little bit. But, I mean, I don't give a fuck. I would, I'll, I'll throw her on top of the boulder. I, I, I'll hold her. <laughs> seriously, I will strip her naked and hold her up like fucking Lion King. I don't care. <laughs> Everybody needs to see that. Not, not one, believe me, not one person will be looking at a fucking cliff. Not one. So we uh, we walk through, we go to rent the car, and the guy I, I I rented it from Advantage. I've never I've never gone through them ever, but they were the ones. Everybody else wanted forty five bucks a day. We were initially I tell you this, we were initially going to rent a car at the Vidara, and just take it for the day. So I called to check on it when I talked to Evan. One of the many times I discussed things with the concierge. It's only a hundred bucks a day to rent a car from the Hertz on site there at the Aria. And I laughed heartily for about an hour. And then when I finished, Evan went, so you're probably not going to rent a car from us. No, no, Evan, I'm not going to. Thank you. I knew then I had to get it from the fucking airport. So I told Jill and she's like, yeah, fuck. So she looked at it and she saw it was like 40 bucks for dollar rent a car. And we had a deal through Southwest, all these different things. But I, I did the Priceline thing and fucking advantage was 20 bucks. And that was for a midsize. Everybody else wanted 40 bucks for an economy. I said, done. So I booked advantage. And I get to the fucking countertop, and this is, this is true. We get to the counter, there's people getting stuff done. A guy comes out from the back, this bald dude. And he walks up, and he, starts, he's, he obviously works there, and he starts talking to one of the counter people while they're checking somebody in. He's like, hey, he goes, were you able to push any of those Cadillacs on anybody yesterday? And she goes, no, not once. And he's like, ugh. He goes, man, I, just, I don't know why they have us trying it, but it's just, it's just crazy. So he goes, next. So I walk up to the front. And uh, I give him my name. He checks me in. He goes, you have a midsize? I said, yes. He's, and they always do that thing now where they go, so do you want the basic coverage or do you want the full coverage? Like, they never ask if you want insurance. They just assume you're going. And I go, I don't want any coverage. And he's like, and they do that fucking spiel where they go, let me ask you this. What's your deductible with your insurance company? I'm like, dude, honestly, I, I'm, again, I'm 50 years old. You don't have to pretend like I don't know how this works. I've rented cars millions of times. Uh, and yes, the, I didn't get insurance once and it was stolen and that turned into a thing forever and I get that but I'm, I've talked to Geico now and I am covered so it doesn't I can't I don't need to do it now and he goes Mikey let me ask you something Mikey he calls me Mikey even I literally looked at Jill and we both and she just mouthed like Mikey really like I because and he's still talking I'm not even looking at him but I looked at her like you heard that right and she just goes Mikey and I'm like mm hmm and we laughed uh I mean, fuck Joe Pesci's renting me a car now. It's like, what the fuck? So sure enough, I said, no, I don't want the coverage. And he goes, all right. Let me ask you, would you be interested in taking a Cadillac today? <laughs> I'm like, you just gave a speech. Can you believe they're making us push these Cadillacs on everybody? You, everybody heard you say it. And you still commit to the bit? And I just went, I don't need a Cadillac. And he goes, well, we got some very nice Cadillacs back there. I go, you know, when you came out, I heard you say all the Cadillacs are still back there. I'm still going to pass. <laughs> And he just immediately grim, mean face. All right, Mikey. I'm like, Mikey, stop. So he, uh, he's like, here, take this. Go out here. Go out the door. And I go out to the, the Advantage desk. And look, I've, I've rented from Hertz. I've rented from everybody. And they, they make sure you get your car. Like, they're kind of on top of it. You know, I, I rented a car once where, when Jill and I went. I forget what, what city it was. It wasn't San Francisco. I forget where it was we rented it. But I walked out and the woman watched my luggage and I bought her a coffee. I think it would have been Milwaukee and I bought her a coffee. Like I took care of her. She was really nice. I go out to the advantage person. There's one guy taking care of like three people and there's a woman eating cookies at a desk. And I peek my head in and she's like, hi. I go, hi, I, I need a car. She goes, okay. 
and she keeps eating cookies and then she gets up and she like brushes her hands off and I, she she made me wait a minute while she finished her cookies and she comes over to the desk and she's like all right well here you want to go over to slot 20 and go ahead and take that i go well i mean what kind of mid-sized cars do you have and she goes well we have uh, right there you got a mazda and i said well it said you had like hyundai sonatas or hyundai elantras she goes we have a mazda and i said all right now for 20 bucks i don't give a fuck I go over, I get in this car, and it, dude, it is a Mazda 5. And I'll tell you what, I hope they've made a Mazda 6 and a 7 and an 8 because they should not have stopped at the 5 because they're not done. <laughs> they're not done. Clearly, and if this is the Mazda 5, I do not want to know what the Mazdas 1 through 4 looked like <laughs> because the Mazda 5 was like a miniature station wagon and it had a front seat, you know, like bucket seats, and then it had two levels. It was like a little van, like a little, and, and it had van doors where you open it. And instead of opening, like opening open, it slid like <laughs> that thing where you slide it down. Motherfucker. Just, and I mean, again, I'm 50 and I recognize that. And, but don't, don't give me a 50 year old person's car. I'm going to Vegas for fuck's sake. You never know. Jill and I might clean the whole town out. You don't want to be driving around in a goddamn mom van when that happens, right? You can't, and if they see you coming in a mom van, I'm going to make sure they don't fucking rig the craps table for you. They're going to try to take all your cash, goddammit. You got to give me a flashy car so they think I'm a flashy dude and they caught me my flashy suite. Instead, mom car. So we get the mom car, we split, we head to the casino, we get to the Badar, we go to check in. Uh, and, uh, it, it was, you know, it was, a, it was a beautiful sight. I didn't realize the Badara was not a casino. The Aria is a casino right next door, but the Vidara is a yep. companion property. And again, it doesn't matter because we're going to the room and going to work. I mean, I'm not going outside. There's no gambling going on. There's stuff getting pulled, but it ain't a fucking slot machine lever. Oh. So, hey, hi, ho, what's happening? Um, but we check in and uh, Jill had to text uh, her, her son to make sure that, you know, they knew she arrived and she was safe and she was talking. And so I'm looking at the desk clerk. I'm, I'm making sure Jill doesn't hear. And I'm like, uh, there, uh, I upgraded twice. Is that in there? She goes, oh, absolutely. And I said, and I asked for a certain window. And she goes, yes, sir. It's all there. It's taken care of. I said, okay, I just want to make sure. And I, you know, I have things that are waiting for me in the room. She goes, according to the concierge, everything is all set. I go, great. That's all I wanted to know. And I know Jill is looking at me whispering to the fucking desk clerk and wondering what's going on. Cause I will say this about Jill. She, I, oftentimes I think Jill should just have like a Sherlock Holmes hat and a magnifying glass. I, I don't, she is, she is constantly, she is the most intuitive person I've ever met in my life where she knows something's up where she'll be, she'll be like, what, what's going on? What? And I'm like, no, nothing. It's, you know, it's fine. And, but she'll see me talk to somebody and she'll go, well, what happened over there? What was that about? And I go, it was nothing. It's fine. But she knows that I'm getting her a dessert for her birthday. You know, I'm like, she always, she sees it coming. She sees everything coming. Cause again, she loves surprises. So, uh, so we walked to the lobby and it's beautiful. And I, you know, like I said, I made sure with the desk clerk, everything's fine. I've got our keys. We go to the elevator. We're on the 36th floor. We go all the way to the top and we are, on the t we are on the top floor of the side we were on. So, uh, we're going up in the elevator we get up at 36 and we go to find our room. And as we're walking, there's a guy, he's like behind us. He's lurking in, he's on the floor kind of lurking when the door opens, we walk past him. And then as we walk past him, he starts to follow us. He's in a suit. And in my head, I'm like, is that the concierge to make sure that everything's okay? Did they alert him? And he's up here to kind of make sure we're good. Cause he made eye contact with me, but he didn't give me a wink or a nod. He didn't touch his nose. <laughs> he didn't call me Mikey, but we start walking and he's right behind us. And Jill, looks at Dr. Watson next to her and just goes, what, what's, why is he following us? I said, I don't know. He's on the floor. And she's like, well, what, is he coming with us? And I go, he's not coming with us. I don't know who this person is. She's like, well, it just seems weird that he's following us. And I go, well, okay. Well, he was here when the door opened. So we're walking. <laughs> he's not actually following you. He's ahead of you. In, no, he's behind. No, he's behind us. He actually... <laughs> He did, but he waited for us yeah. to pass him. And I, I will tell you, I'm a little frosty too. And it's because, you know, Jill and I watch murder shows all the goddamn time. If I'm not watching somebody make cupcakes, I'm watching somebody get buried. So the two of us are constantly on alert, waiting to see what's going to happen. Uh, so 
it, it was a little different. I won't lie. But in my mind, I'm thinking he's the concierge. Like, I, I will tell you this. If I didn't know that I had all this stuff waiting in the room, I would have wondered why he waited for us to get off the elevator and then he started walking behind us. Clearly, I would have. Uh, but because I know that he's probably coming with us to double check and make sure that we're good and he's going to say, enjoy your stay and kind of he was like a welcoming committee maybe for her birthday and stuff. I'm not worried about it. She's panicked. She's ready to climb into her suitcase and hide. Like, I mean, I, she's like freaking out and I'm like, honey, it's okay. We're, we're good. So I'm trying to be calm and try to keep her calm, but I'm excited because I know when we get in the room, she's going to see that it's the fucking panoramic suite and, and there's flowers. It's her birthday. I'm so excited. And again, I'm armed with the knowledge that my beautiful girlfriend loves surprises. In the past, every surprise I've ever given her, oh my God, she's been so thrilled. So we're walking to the room. This guy's behind us. And as we come around the corner to get to room 36, which is right on the end, the door is open and there's a maid card in front of it. And I am fucking furious because I like the grand gesture. I like the grandiose entrance. I wanted to open the door with the key and wave my arm and go, voila, and have my girlfriend walk in on her birthday and see all of the windows and the flowers and the cupcakes. I wanted it to be special, the two of us to walk in and her to see the amazing surprise that I had cooked up for her birthday. I did not want her to walk into the suite and see some woman named Isabel mopping the floor. Why the fuck isn't this room ready? It's 5.30 in the afternoon. You knew I was coming. It's all set. Everything's square. Why is there somebody in there? So I got this guy behind us following us, and now I got a maid in the fucking room, and everything's falling apart. My grandiose gesture is falling apart, and I'm furious. I want my beautiful girlfriend to see her beautiful flowers, not the woman who picked them. Not the fucking gardener's daughter. So I'm like, all right, fuck. So, and the thing is, Jill knows, all right, because I, I see the maid cart and I freeze. Like, I get I get my hackles up. And and look, I'm not exactly a closed fucking book, all right? We know that. I mean, you can t- kind of tell when something's wrong with me. So maybe Jill's not as intuitive as I think she is. She's just, uh, you know, used to seeing me freak the fuck out. I have no idea. But you can tell everything got different. We were walking. I was so happy. I was excited. I see the maid cart and I... I hulk up. I'm like, I kind of fucking get pissed. And I, and I go, a maid cart? And Jill's like, what, honey, why? And I go, no, it's just, I don't, uh, just do me a favor. Stay out here. And she goes, what? And I go, just stay here. I'll take care of it. I, just, I don't understand why there's a maid in our room. Just stay here. And, and not realizing I'm ruining it too. You know what I mean? Because I'm... Because I wanted to bring her in to, and I knew, but I've known for days, I fucking six phone calls back and forth, fucking flowers and everything. I made these arrangements over and over, two upgrades. I knew what I wanted. What I didn't want was a fucking maid in there cleaning the toilet while I brought my girlfriend in on her birthday. I didn't want that. Why the fuck is it happening? So I could have mellowed out and just went, hey, honey, you know, let's go in. And it's, I, I don't know why they're cleaning the room. I could have rolled with it, but instead I got fucking pissed. So I make my girlfriend on her birthday, I go, stay out here. Stay out here. I don't even let her in the room. I go in and I, uh, <laughs> I, I, again, I'm pissed. I'm like seeing red. So I basically lifted the maid cart and threw it out of the way. Like, I mean, I was, I like fucking lifted the end and I fucking tossed it because I'm trying to, I, I went to slide it and it wasn't like the wheels were locked. So I just picked it up and fucking moved it. And, uh, not realizing how that looks like, I mean, I don't, you know, I just, I just wanted what I wanted. That's all I wanted. I wanted what I wanted. I am five. I, yeah, but you know what? I am five, and I made two more phone calls than the years I'm I'm old than to, to get what I fucking wanted. So make it happen. I paid forty dollars. God damn it! <laughs> I upgraded twice. Make it happen. So I walk in, and the maid is right in the little kitchen area, and uh, she goes, "Hi," and I go, "I go, why are you in here?" She goes, I was making sure the room is okay. And I go, well, is it clean? And she goes, yeah. And I go, but I go, but why are you here at six at night? It makes no sense. I'm checking in. I go, you know, it's, I, I've got my girlfriend. It's her birthday. I want her to see the flowers. I don't, I don't want her to see the room getting cleaned. And this one has no idea who she's talking to. She doesn't even know who I am. Cause I'm just standing there talking to her in the kitchen all of a sudden. And she just goes, okay, well, I'm, I'm leaving now. It's okay. And I go, I understand it's okay, but I, I don't even know why you're here. She goes, who are you? And I go, this is my room. And she goes, do you have your key? 
And I go, yeah. She goes, can you hold it against the lock so I know that this is your room? Because I, then it, re, it dawns on me, she has no fucking idea who I am. She's just there cleaning up the fucking room. And this madman comes in and goes, why are you in here? Why are you cleaning this room? Well, fuck. So I walk over and I go, and I calm down then. And I go over and I put my key on the door and it goes beep, beep. And it makes the noise. And she goes, okay, well, thank you. I just wanted to make sure everything was like, and she goes walking out and I walk out in the hallway and Jill is just standing there with this face. Like, I don't know who, what the fuck you're doing. Why are you doing this? And, and I come outside and I look at her and I go, Hey, I go, all right, well, we can go in now. And she's like, I, well, what's wrong? And I go, nothing's wrong. I go, I just, you know, I wanted, I wanted this to be special. So I, and she goes, well, honey, we're, you know, there's a guy following us. Now there's a maid cart and you're mad. And I don't know what's, and I go, why didn't, so I, I go, look, let's just, let's just go in. So we walk into the room and we walk down the hallway. There's a, there's a hallway to the kitchen and you can, and all the windows are there. The only thing is they're not open. They have the blackout shades closed. I would have preferred they were open so she could see the whole deal. And what I could have done was done that when I walked in to talk to the maid, but instead I was busy yelling at an immigrant. So fuck. So we walk into the room and Jill comes walking in. And we walk down the hallway to the kitchen, and on the kitchen table, there's the flowers with the card that says Jill and the cupcakes. And they're sitting, the cupcakes are in boxes. And I look at her, and I kind of smile, and she just goes, what is going on? I go, what do you mean? And she goes, what is going on? Like, you're, you're mad, and you're mad at her and that guy in the hallway. I go, nothing's going on. I said, it's... <laughs> We're in Vegas and it's your birthday. She goes, yeah, but she goes, honey, you just picked up a maid card and threw it. <laughs> I said, well, I didn't throw it. She goes, no, you did. And you're pissed. And then you come in here and you leave me alone in the hallway with a man who's out there following us. And I go, I didn't leave you alone with a guy following you. I go, if anything had happened, I would have gone out there and fucking murdered him. And she goes, that's what I want to hear on my birthday. I go, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> and so we're standing there in the kitchen. The blackout shades are closed and she's, and she's like, she's, she's mad at me and she goes well what are you doing like what is what's going on and I go look and I I literally I can't even imagine what it looked how sheepishly terrible it looked but I was just like hey like voila like I held up my hands <laughs> to try to make up for all the dumb shit I had just done and uh and she's just looking at me she goes honey I don't you're just mad and it's just it just kind of freaks me out when you get upset like that and I go I understand that but I wasn't I wanted everything to be perfect. She goes, but it's, it's fine. We have the room. And I go, I go, but you don't, don't you see? And I held out my hand to the flowers and she goes, what did you do? I said, there's a card, your name's on it. I got you, I got you flowers. I got, I got cupcakes. I got, it's your birthday. Happy birthday. She goes, why did you do this? And I said, because it's your birthday. And my girlfriend, who loves surprises, says, I told you not to get me any flowers. <laughs> I said, yeah, I understand that, but I wanted to get you flowers. You said not to get them in Milwaukee because you wouldn't want them and they would die. They're not going to die here. She goes, but, but we're only here one night. I go, we can take them with us. <laughs> <It's true. laughs> and she goes, but what is this room? And... So I took her around and I go, look, and I held open the shades and the view is unbelievable. She goes, why did you do this? I said, I upgraded. She goes, but we booked the room together. That was together. That was what we did together. And I go, yeah. And then I found out that I could upgrade. She goes, yeah, but I know how much this cost. I don't want you doing that. Why would you pay? I go, it didn't. I go, can't you just enjoy this? Can't you just be happy? She goes, yeah, but you were furious like 10 minutes ago. And I go, yes, but, but I upgraded to like a nice, there, look at this room. I go, the, the view is amazing. And I got you flowers. It's your birthday. I just want you to be happy. She goes, I'm happy just being with you. She's like, we don't have to stay in this room. And I know what it cost. And I go, it didn't cost that. Trust me. All right. I go, I wouldn't tell you it just, just can't you, can we just, I, 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 I shouldn't have surprised you. She goes, well. You know, you leave me in the hallway and there's a guy following us and then you throw a maid cart and you're fucking pissed off. And I go, I'm not mad anymore. There's flowers and windows and it's awesome, right? Isn't it awesome? I'm so not mad, my God! And she's just standing there. And I go, can we get past this and just kind of enjoy your birthday now? She goes, yeah, but I, 
I don't, I don't know why you paid to make this. I go, it was $40. <laughs> she goes, what? I go, it was $40. I go, they contacted me with an email and they upgraded me once. And then I talked to them when I was arranging the flowers and they upgraded it a second time. She goes, $40. She goes, I know what this room costs. And I go, yes, I know. And I know what we paid. And I was shocked that it only cost $40. Is that okay? <laughs> and she goes, well, why would they email you for an upgrade? <laughs> I go, I'm not lying about the upgrade. I'll show you the email. Do you want to call the concierge? She goes, it just doesn't seem right. I go, look, can you put away your fucking Sherlock Holmes hat for just a second? I didn't say that, but in my head, I'm like, honey, I love you. We have a panoramic suite. We have a wraparound view of Vegas. You have fucking a dozen of your favorite flowers with a card that I meticulously fucking dictated over the phone. You have two unsmashed cupcakes. We have a sink and a fridge and a fucking two-person bathtub and a goddamn two-person shower. And oh my God, can we just relax and enjoy your birthday, please? But she's still like looking at me with this weird face. And I'm like, I love you. Happy birthday. And she goes, well, thank you. But you know, you didn't have to do any of that. I, I know I didn't. I didn't have to do any of this. I wanted to do it. It was 40 bucks. My God, please, honey. It's the weirdest thing. She doesn't like surprises, and I love giving surprises. And just but then she won't, she doesn't cave. Never. And it takes 40 minutes. We walked around, and I opened all the blackout shades, and she saw the view, and then she relaxed, and we saw the tub and everything. And then finally she looked at me, and she just goes, It's so beautiful. And I'm like, yes, it is. And she goes, I love the flowers, honey. They're so beautiful. And I'm like, yes, it only took you 45 minutes to realize that it's okay if people do nice things for you. <laughs> and she's like, but I know what all this costs. And I go, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I said, money comes and goes, but memories last forever. And she's like, yeah, but that's why you never have any money. <laughs> And I couldn't argue with that at all. <laughs> you guys can get me at Mike at Mike Schmidt comedy dot com. Uh, you guys can be my friend at Facebook dot com slash the 40 year old boy. You can follow me at Twitter dot com slash the 40 year old boy. I got a bunch of Twitter followers this week. Uh, yeah, because if I, I'll talk about it on the out. But um, yeah, uh, so you guys can go ahead and uh, find my friend David Hernandez. It is all of the music. And all of the artwork for the show. He is a renaissance man. He is my great friend. And he is a talented, talented artist and composer. And he does all of that stuff for us uh, on the dole. I can't believe that he does it. But I owe him more than I could ever repay. You can find him at facebook.com slash David Mex Hernandez and be his friend. And have him tell you about how there is no Jesus. Or you can go to his personal website. <laughs> Artbydmh.com, A-R-T-B-Y-D-M-H.com. You can check out work he's done in the past. You can commission work for him to do for you in the future. Uh, he will paint for you. He will work in oil. He will work in watercolors. He works in ketchup. He does all of those things. You can get him at Artbydmh.com and drop him a note and hire him to do things for you that he would only do for people who pay. Uh, unless you've known him for 35 years like I have. Uh, our friend Lily Von Strupp is the producer of this show and the owner of this building. And the plugger in of the microphone. You can find her at facebook.com slash Lily Von Stupp. And uh, you can go ahead and be her friend, I think. You can ask to be her friend and make a little red number come up on her page that she will ignore for months and months. You can go ahead and get her at several different Twitter accounts. Twitter.com slash Lily Von Stupp. Twitter.com slash MNTs. And Twitter.com slash Hollywood BQ Fest. You can find her at Snapchat in Lily's Naked Ha Ha. That's her name there. <laughs> no, it is. Lily's Naked Haha, ha, you can find her there. Uh, you can also find her at Meerkat. Her name there is, uh, I don't even know what this is, but you can find me here. I'm Lily. <laughs> don't think that's right either. She's at Meerkat, and uh, she's also available at, uh, what, what was that other one we just did when everybody got kicked out of Facebook? Ello. She's at Ello, 
And uh, she's got her name, Lily Von Stupp, over there if you want to be her friend on Elo or enter her circle or go in her Echo or whatever the fuck Elo does. I signed up for it and never looked at it again. Never looked at it again. I signed up with, with Lily. She invited me. I jumped on, and I, I don't, I've not done anything. I've just All I did was plant my flag in Elo as if I were Neil Armstrong exploring the internet moon. Just in case Zuckerberg sells me too many things, I can go over to Elo and, and get completely ignored by everybody. So I'm looking forward to it. But you can find Lily at all of those different Twitter accounts. But if you'd like to write her a personal note... And uh, find out her policy on mixing flavors of jelly beans. <laughs> you can get her at lily at burlesque411.com. That's lily, L-I-L-I, at burlesque411.com. Max? Yes, Mike. Am I vascular and yoked? Yes, Mike. Shall we begin? Yes, my Jokers everywhere gather round There's a funky new crew going down There's a man that is going to town He's banging on a treadmill and he's wired for sound So you're gonna have to stay on alert Leeches. 
girl holds my gun and can make fire shoot out of her fur -er purse. I love a girl who looks like a cartoon rabbit. Let's me see her best than naked. I love a woman with a skull hard enough to crack a headboard. I love it when they beat me, beat me at Tetris. I love making clothes for mice. Want to remind you folks about the Monday Night Tees every Monday night at the Three Clubs on Vine at Santa Monica. It is the world's most successful burlesque show. Only in competition at La Caja Faux in France. And, uh, and Fleur de Sel from New Orleans. That's actually sea salt. I don't know if that's uh, really a dance, but, uh, but maybe. <laughs> it could be. Look it up. I haven't been to New Orleans. New Orleans. Jill and I have talked about going there. We're, we're traveling all over the place. Jill and I, you know, I asked her, I was like, where do you want to go more than anywhere in the entire world? Where's the place you want to go? And she, of course, said, in your arms. Ha <laughs> ha. She didn't really say that. She said the Galapagos Islands. And I don't blame her because it looked like fucking awesome. We went and Googled it up. They got penguins and turtles and all sorts of guys over there. And so we're planning on that. That's going to be a plan. I may even do a live remote from there. Hey, I might book a show there. Maybe I'll book a show. 40-year-old boy comes to the Galapagos Islands. I'll do a show for a fucking hippo or whatever. The, what, what, what did they have there? There was some big dude there. Oh, they have whales. Go to the Easter Island instead. That would be much more fun. Around Stonehenge? Yeah. Hmm. Will the microphone work around Stonehenge? <laughs> you think there's clicking now? I stand in the center of that because I saw Halloween 3, boy, and I, that's not good. The moon is a full moon, and it hits Stonehenge, and there's like a thing, and I'll get turned into bugs. Ah, I don't want to get turned into bugs. So the uh, Monday Night Tees is a fantastic show, one that I enjoy, one that you will enjoy if you go, and one that is certainly enjoyed by our good friend Lily Von Stupp, who is the producer of that show, an amazing, uh, kind of a staple in the entertainment world here in Los Angeles. Every Monday you can count on it. Morning, noon, and night. People are anticipating that evening and going to the Monday Night Tees and going to see ladies get naked and enjoy uh, libations and labiations. They've got all of that over there. So, uh, so the Monday Night Tees. Hi, uh, uh, Lily's the producer. Hi, Lily. I had to get out of labiations as you shook your head and got mad at me. I didn't get mad. I'm not yelling. <laughs> I'm okay. The, uh, so, you, so how was the show this past week? Who was there on Monday? It was fantastic. It was a great show. Should have been there. It's always a great show, and I should always be there. Who were, who were on it? That finish was in from out of town. Ona, Masu, Ma, Ona Monsoon killed. Uh, Bo Toxic debuted a new album. Red Snapper was there. I mean, it was just it was a great show all around. Sounds like Red fun. Wolverine. Oh, Greta did a Wolverine deal? Oh, good. That's awesome. Uh, I'm sorry I missed it. I wish I could have been there. Again, remember, if you guys all want to go to the show, contact Lily and tell her you are listeners and you will be there. And, uh, and if you smack around the ass, you get in free. So, Wrong. who's coming up this week? Wrong. It's Lily's school for wayward girls. We've got graduates taking their clothes off. So people you have taught, yes. people who have taken your classes and learned all of your secrets, yes. will be okay. bringing those secrets to bear on the audience. Literally to bear. Well, then... So that sounds good. Is, is it? Uh, are you mixing in pros and graduates, or just graduates? Yeah, there'll be some alumni as well. Oh, look at that, man! So that show tickets are available at brownpapertickets.com for all of the upcoming Monday night teases. Are there other plugs like where you're going to be? I'm seeing on the road. Uh, if you are in Vegas, I am doing brunch lesk this weekend. Brunch lesk um, this weekend in Vegas. Yes, it's uh, what is it? Legs and easy over teasy. <laughs> Oh, my it's word. That's going to be March 30th? No, that no. is actually March 29th, 1130 a.m. at Boomer's Bar. It okay. includes your breakfast and your show, and it's uh, pretty awesome. Can they get tickets online, or do they just show up? They can get tickets online. If you go over to brownpapertickets.com, do a search for Brunch Lesk, and it should come up. Brown Paper Tickets. Well, because you'll be at brownpapertickets.com anyway, Googling, looking for Monday Night Tees. That's very true. You'll be searching Lily Von Stupp or Monday Night Tees. And so Brunch Lesk, you search that while you're over there and grab tickets for that if you're going to be in Vegas this particular weekend. I'm also teaching in Vegas this weekend. If anyone wants to get class... On Saturday, I have a class on performance, I have a class on marketing, and I have a class on production. And you can find those through uh, Lily's School for Wayward Girls. Lily's School for Wayward Girls. 
It's burlesqueclasses.com. Burlesqueclasses.com. So go to burlesqueclasses.com and learn about taking the Lily's classes. And also that you teach here in uh, Los Angeles if there's any openings I there. Do. So if you guys want to do that, go to burlesqueclasses.com and you can learn from our friend, the foul-mouthed, buxom godmother of Los Angeles burlesque, world burlesque even. Uh, go to Brown Paper Tickets and check out all of the upcoming shows. Go to facebook.com slash Monday Night Tees and become a friend of the page and see naked people from the past and uh, people who will be naked in the future. Photos and lineups and all that available at facebook.com slash Monday Night Tees. And again, go to Brown Paper Tickets and put in Lily's name or put in Brunch Lesk and all of that stuff and you will get tickets and you can buy uh, class admittance. All of that neat stuff is available for our good friend Lily Von Stupp, who produces this show and uh, allows me to come over every week and now steal her bar stool and use my cock-shaped microphone, which is good. Uh, you guys can go again like I mentioned you can find Max at artbydmh.com and uh, and tell him that you can't wait to hear what he's come up with for this year's interlude you can go and find our friend Ryan Dirks who does all of the web stuff for this show at uh, well facebook.com slash Ryan Dirks you can be his friend that's D-I-R-K-S and you can also find him at Ryan Dirks at littleprofiles.com right or Ryan Dirks slash littleprofiles.com I think that's what it is. It's, it's yeah, ryandirks.littleprofiles.com. Try all of those things, and eventually, or just Google Ryan Dirks Little Profiles, and I'm sure it will come up, and you'll find him, and yay. And you can do that. So, oh, hold on, Lily's got some fabulous fingers flying on the keyboard, and she's going to go ahead and find it, and I'm going to confirm exactly what it is for you as I talk into this windsock. Um, Ryan Dirks Little Profiles, because I, I remember one week I thought it was littlepeople.com, and that didn't make Ryan any sense. Ryandirks.littleprofiles.com. Ryan Dirks! That littleprofiles.com and uh, go check out our friend Ryan there. He does all of the web stuff for the show when he's not out bailing hay or feeding chickens because he is Farmer Ryan. Uh, remember to go to MikeSchmidtComedy.com and go ahead and check out all the stuff we have there. All the pages there are neat, uh, if a little inactive at this point. But if you go to the Joe Business page, well, first of all, on all of the pages, you can donate to the show. In the upper left-hand corner, there's a little Schmitty with his pocket out. But on the Joe Business page, he's down by the little hobo Schmitty. You can click on that and donate a one-time donation to the show which we like or you can donate uh individually for uh per month two dollars a month five dollars a month ten dollars a month twenty five dollars a month always appreciated thank you so much for your donations uh we have t-shirts available your dirt dirt shirts are available uh you can go ahead and check those out uh, tweaked audio as i mentioned earlier is a sponsor of this show thank you guys we're so glad you're on board with us still and uh we have downloads we have the big angry cd available and that is uh you can play that and i will actually sign it and send it out to you and it's also i found out it's on spotify uh i found out that the big angry is on spotify so if you listen to it on there i get credit and i get dough for that i suppose so go listen to it on spotify if you want uh or buy it and then you'll have it and you can actually because you know what just listening to it is okay but if you buy it you get the whole artwork and the whole package and the whole thing that max and uh and i put together and by i i mean i nodded and said yes when he came up with an idea so good uh, check out all that stuff if you buy the CD. And like I said, downloads are available year one, year two, year three, year four, year five, and year six of this podcast are available individually, or you can buy them all together as part of the Reservoir Dogs, Reservoir Schmidt Dogs box set. Uh, pick that up. I'll be happy. So will you make my past your future. And we've got Schmidt Alive 2. That download is available for you. It's a live audio video package where you get both. It's the same performance, but in two different formats. And, uh, Pick that up, and I will send it to you post-haste. That means immediately. N not this second, because I'm not at a computer right now. But please hang tight, like our friend Dylan is doing right now, because I got his order late last night, and I had to come and record before I was able to send it to him. So, Dylan, it's on the way. Although, by the time you hear this, you should have it, or else I'm a real dick, because I'm recording this on Wednesday, and you're hearing it on Thursday. So, ostensibly, you should have it already. So, this is actually, this is your, this is my present but it's your past, but it's actually your present as you're listening to it, but it's my past. <laughs> I, I, if I keep talking about this, Doctor Who will show up, right? Won't he just show up in some sort of way? I have no idea. Uh, so you go ahead and get the downloads, all that stuff's available. And please remember to use our Amazon link. If you use our Amazon link, we get credit for that. You can click on the Amazon link on our Joe Business page, and then you go through to our store, and then click to the real Amazon, and anything you buy, we get credit for. Thank you so much. Uh, Christmas was really cool. We, uh, you know, They were able to help us out a lot. You guys did that, and uh, thank you. I look forward to see what happened in January. Uh, they, they get us at the end of the month. Whatever. Who cares? Thank you so much for doing that. Use our Amazon link. We get credit for it. That's perfect. Uh, and I will tell you this. I am coming live. What? That's right. I told you this last week. I should have mentioned it earlier in the show. But I'm telling you again, I'm doing a live show in Phoenix 
Arizona at, uh, I think it's stage 55. Not, I, I keep mixing it up if it's space 55 or stage 55, but I'm pretty sure it's stage 55 in Phoenix, Arizona. The show is May 16th. That's Saturday night. Uh, show starts, I think it's 730. And, uh, and it'll go for four hours. Eh, no, it'll probably go for an hour. Eh, two hours. I don't know. It'll, I'll talk till I'm done. Uh, and that's actually, that night, that's not a good thing because there's a show coming in after me. So just, I, it will start promptly at 7.30, and then I will talk and try to get in everything I fucking can before the other people have to come in and set up a fucking coat rack and whatever the fuck they need for their late show. <laughs> but, uh, but tickets are available now at brownpapertickets.com for my show at uh, Stage 55 in Phoenix, Arizona, May 16th. And I'm planning on adding a bunch more live dates on the East Coast and in the Midwest and stuff. Eh, a bunch is strong, but uh, there's all sorts of grandiose plans we have. You know me, I like the grandiose gesture. All I say is when I come to your town, make sure the maid's not in the fucking room. That's all I ask. <laughs> <laughs> Unless she wants me to throw a cart. If you, I, you know what, if you want me to see it, throw a maid cart, have the maid in my room when I fucking show up. <laughs> Uh, that doesn't matter to me. You know what? Fuck it. I again, if a maid's there when I show up, I don't care. Just finish your maid shit and get the fuck out. But I mean, I you know. But if I'm there to have a fucking gesture, get the maid out of there. Although I won't be having a gesture when I'm on the road. I don't think it's just me going in my room and eating Taco Bell and crying. Um, actually, I'm sorry. That was me ten years ago. So, uh, so I. You know what's funny? Here, you know, folks. Have you ever done this when you had your mom and your dad and you had to ask him something? You always knew who was the easier one to ask. You'd be like, oh man, I know my dad's never gonna say yes to that. I better go ask mom. And you, and you hoped she didn't say, go ask your father, right? Well, I have kind of a version of that in my life. Uh, you know, because uh, there are things that like, I would normally ask our friend Lily if we were off microphone. I would say, hey, here's a, a favor or a question I have to ask you. And then we would have a, you know, a nice conversation about it. Uh, but if there's something that I think she may say no to, I think it's easier if I ask her on an open microphone in front of you guys. And so she can't say no, right? She has to go along with it. She has to realize that she would look like a terrible, terrible person and a mean mom if she said no. So, hey, Lily, I wanted to talk to you about something. Hey, Mike, what? I don't know if you've heard this, but uh, there's a band. I don't know if you've heard of them called Van Halen. Yeah, I have. I've heard of them. <clears throat> there's a band named Van Halen. They are putting out a live album at the end of this month. It is a greatest hits album. It is a full concert. Them with David Lee Roth. Uh, I will tell you, there are clips online of this show, and uh, I went and listened to Panama, and it said it was the band with David Lee Roth, but I think it was actually the band with a hissing radiator on lead vocal. I'm not sure, because I don't know how they're going to release this. I think I talked about this in a show last year, and I felt guilty about it at the time, because Van Halen is my band. They are my fucking wheelhouse. They are it. They are everything I've wanted in a band. I love Eddie. I love the band. I love Dave. And I've always said, let bands be what they want to be. Don't ascribe to them your needs. You know, just, it's not 1981 anymore. They can't be fair warning Van Halen. They're what they are now, and take what you can from them. But also, at the same time, in my show, I fucking savaged Dave because I was really disappointed with the way it turned out. I just, he just did not sound good, and he seemed to be more about shtick. Well, they're putting out this live album, and when I heard the clips, because they, they put out a live Running With The Devil, live Panama, and I think Ain't Talking About Love. They put out the live clips first before the album came out, and I listened to Panama, and I got through the first verse, and I had to turn it off because Dave sounds worse than he sounded when I saw them live. And this is one full show from Tokyo. They're putting it out as an album. And when I heard it, I, I, I won't lie, I said to my friend Pat, I said, dude, I, this might be like a fuck you to Dave so they are able to get him out of the band and move on. Like they're putting this out as a way for people to hear how what they have to work with and so people won't be mad when they choose a different lead singer. Like, I couldn't... It's that bad. When I heard it, I was like, oh my God. Because Dave's all about personality and shtick and that doesn't come through in these clips. All you hear is a guy who can't sing. So I was crazy disappointed and to the point where I went, I don't know if I can get this album. Even though it has my favorite Van Halen song of all time, hear about it later. Even though it has Women in Love, it has these deep album cuts, which I would love to have live versions of, but... If he can't sing them, what's the point? So I wasn't sure if I was going to get the live album or not. I'm still kind of on the fence about it. I might have to just because I'm a completist and because Eddie sounded amazing when I saw them live. So my theory was that this was going to be the blow off. This would be the release to kind of placate the fans and then they could move on and Eddie and Wolfie could do whatever the fuck they wanted with the band going forward without Dave. And then... They announced that they were going to be playing on the Ellen show the first week of April with Dave. And 
that seemed like a weird thing because they said they were doing it to promote the album. So I'm like, well, obviously they're not blowing Dave off if they're going to be playing a live show with him on television. And then they just announced yesterday they're touring all summer. They're doing a live greatest hits tour off of the live album and they're going all over the place. And so I'm excited because I was going to see them here October 2nd at the Hollywood Bowl, but I cannot because Jill and I already have plans out of town. But Jill and I will probably see them in San Diego that week, or we will see them in Irvine early in July. But all of that means nothing to you, Lily Von Strupp, as you sit there and I tell you about Van Halen. But I will tell you this. I mentioned they were playing Ellen. And a lot of people are like, that's a really strange choice. Because that's like a mom talk show. What the fuck is Van Halen doing on there? Well, you know, because they're fucking 65 years old. So maybe they're hitting wheelhouse there. And also maybe some of those girls are going to look at Dave and go, woo, I got to go see him live because he is still in pretty good shape. Uh, And by pretty good, I mean amazing shape. The guy looks like he's fucking carved out of wood. (laughs) Now, when they announced the world tour yesterday and they announced that the album was coming out and they announced they were going all over the place, they announced all the dates, they also announced something else. You know, Ellen airs April 3rd, I think, or 2nd, and it is their first ever appearance on North American television with the original lineup. They have never, other than videos, they've made videos, obviously, but they've never been live in studio. Eddie's played with David Letterman. David Lee Roth's been on Letterman. Uh, David Lee Roth was on The Tonight Show, and he performed you know, with, uh, with his fucking Vegas Copacabana band on Leno. So they've done piecemeal shows, but they've never been Van Halen with the original lineup in North America. This will be the first time on Ellen. And I was like, that's a fucking weird choice, but I get it, sort of. Until it all made sense yesterday. They announced, Van Halen, that not only are they doing the world tour, not only is the album coming out, not only are they remastering uh, the first three original albums, I think it is, and they're re-releasing those at the same time that they release the live album, but they'll also be appearing on Jimmy Kimmel for the first time in North America, as a band, their first appearance on television will be on Jimmy Kimmel, and it's going to be two nights. It's going to be the 30th and the 31st of March. Now, here, Lily Von Stupp, is where I put this to you. They're closing Hollywood Boulevard for this performance. Mm-hmm. They're playing a concert. They're not just doing like one song. Apparently, they're going to do like five songs. So they're going to close Hollywood Boulevard next Monday. And it's going to be a zoo because Van Halen is playing on fucking Hollywood Boulevard, conquering heroes, returning home. It's fucking amazing. You know, I fly the next day. I'm on a plane on, uh, actually, I fly on Wednesday. I fly to Milwaukee, but I'm in town on Monday, the 30th. Now, I know Milwaukee is far away, and I know Monday is your day off. You are concentrating on the tease. You are full bore going toward the Monday night tease, and you are taking care of all of that. However, your good friend Mike that day would love to go see Van Halen on Hollywood Boulevard, but he doesn't want to stand around like an idiot for eight hours waiting for the band to go on because I am a living, breathing Greg Barrent bit. I want to show up when the band is supposed to play, and then I want to go home when the band is finished. I don't want to watch an opening act. I don't want to fucking deal with all this nonsense. I don't want to stand behind a barricade and hope. I want to know when they're going on, and I want to be there to watch it, and then I want to just go ahead and take off. So I can't be standing on Hollywood Boulevard all day Monday, killing time, waiting for the band to go on. But I know a friend who lives in Hollywood who may be able to provide me shelter, who may be able to provide me a nice place to hang out as I wait for Van Halen to close Hollywood Boulevard and take the stage. Her name is Lily Von Stupp. So I put it to you. I know Monday is your busy day. You're wondering about the tease. You're putting on eyelashes for three hours. You're putting on makeup. You're you're designing costumes. You're teaching strippers. You're making pasties. You're building a stage. You're pouring drinks. You're going over your routine. You're thinking about all the things you're going to do that night at the tease. Monday is for you because, again, when I do a live show, for me, that day is mine. I sit in my hotel bed and I script out what I'm going to do. I think about beats. I think about what I did when I traveled. I try to figure out what I'm going to talk about. And I know you do much the same thing on Mondays. Well, I'm here to tell you I would be quiet as a mouse 
I would totally stay out of your way. I would just come in here into the oldest building in Hollywood and just and work on my laptop and be totally silent and I would not bother you and I wouldn't tell you anything that you didn't want to hear and I wouldn't even talk to you if you didn't want me to. And then when Van Halen was going to go on, I would sneak out of your house. And then when they were done, I would sneak back here and I would take my things and I would leave and you would never know I was here. So I put it to you. Can I come hang out at your place all day next Monday? No. God damn it. This show starts as a tiny snowball, and at the end, the hundreds are dead at the bottom of a ravine. I mean, I get that. Believe me, if there's any show in the history of the world that does not need to be transcribed for posterity, it's this one. <laughs> I like tiny. I like when nobody can see the seams. I like when I'm able to kind of just, you know, fly with the bees wherever. When I have to actually stop the bees and laugh for directions, that's not fun. I just like unleashing the bees, but when the bees have to stop in mid-flight and we all just kind of look at each other and bust out a fucking map, that's not fun at all. I want to saddle up these bees and ride, goddammit! Done. 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 Done.